We're live. Incredible scenes. Hi. It, it is. This is this is very exciting. Right. So this is very exciting. No. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, straight away I can't see anything. So yeah, I can't see anything. That's, uh, so that's cool. <laughs> that's about par for the course. I can't see any uh, video link or anything. It's just like every Sunday. Uh, have a drink of coffee, yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Sarah Lou's in the house, though. So and you can Mel? see. Can you see it on YouTube? I can't see it. On no, YouTube. I can see it on eCam, but I can't see it on YouTube. Amber's in. Oh, hold Leo. on a second. Live. Hold on. Live stream disaster, it says here. Yeah, where, where are you seeing that? Uh, if you go to the Justin Hawkins Rides Again page, mm -hmm. uh, it's, the, it's the heading thing, the live stream Found disaster, it. which started streaming less than, two, less than one minute ago. This is incredible. And now I can see us, yeah. Yeah, this is great. Right, and so where well, do how I... come the angle is not the same as the angle? It's never the same. It's never the same. It's, I don't know what it is. And then my head, it looks like I put my head in the, in the washing machine earlier on and... It's just come out badly. It, 128. You look like a different person from last switch week. And I, switchboards I, are lighting up. How many? What? what? 134. <laughs> Hello, this is incredible. We've smashed it. I see it. it. Yeah, I see it. I see it popping up. Hello, everybody. Hello, all our regulars. Hello, all the people who don't normally see us. Um, we yes, I know what you're thinking. Who is this bastard? We'll answer that question presently. Yeah, we, we're going to give it four minutes, and then we'll do the proper introductions. Just trying to yeah. iron out all the uh, technical we're difficulties. All, you're all very welcome to uh, this very, very special event. Justin, tell them something. Tell them what's going on. Tell them what the plan right, is. Right, so this tell is... Tell me what the plan is. Okay, this is the plan. Um, right, that man in the other screen there... A plan! We've, never we've got, got a, a plan. plan I didn't tell you about this, actually, but there is a plan. Um, so... Okay, great. The man I'm speaking to tonight is Pat Carty. Okay. Eminent, preeminent, if you will. Irish music writer, journalist. Um, all round... Oh, no, Broadcast. DJ as well, broadcaster, yeah. Um, Broadcaster, yeah. I'm dear, actually, I'm actually on radio at uh, quarter past ten tonight. So if people get bored, they can just switch the channel. What in thirteen minutes? Uh, Twenty uh, quarter past ten e e uh, GMT. Okay. Um, so every week we do this, but we do it behind the uh, the shield of Patreon. And today is our first mm. public. The very. The very forgiving shield of Patreon. Yes, I, I might say. where you can say and do anything. Mm. So, um, if you are interested, by the way, in uh, <laughs> if uh, if the Patreon is something that uh, piques your interest, the link to it will be Hold in on, the so where's description. The, where's the link? I don't, uh, up. I don't know. Actually, I think it's down this time. It's, is it? It's, well, I'm losing you straight away. You're very pixelated now this evening, Justin. I hope that's not the same. No, you look great on the YouTube. It's just on the Skype. It's working. It's very pixelated. Ignore that's the okay. Skype. We can Don't worry. Right. Yeah. Hello from, hello from Cork, it says here. Hello from Donegal. There's a lot of my country men and women joining us tonight. That's great. Get on with it, lads. No, no, this is it. <laughs> we, we are getting on with it. This is yeah, what it is. This is it. So what we need is yeah. comments and suggestions. Alberta, we need Fort, questions. Fort McMurray, Alberta. Who? What? Fort McMurray, Alberta, we have someone for. Who's Pat? See, there you go. And Paul, you know who I am, so that's not funny. Uh, <laughs> I can't Moscow, things, yeah. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Well, you're all very welcome. That's fantastic. Andy Guitar is there. That's oh, fantastic. yes, Andy Guitar's in. Brilliant. Andy Guitar is our man. We've got yeah. our first comment that, that Andy requires... Andy Guitar has uh, 75... Andy has 75 million uh, followers, so, you know, we, we need to yeah. pick up our game, I think. He brought 500 yeah. with him tonight. Um, yeah. So Dave, Dave, Dave's life hack says loved the Newcastle show, Justin, and then did three of these. So that's good. Thanks, man. Free, free back at you. Grumpy Alf says regards from Germany. Is that some sort of is that some sort of rating system for rock and yeah. roll shows? You it's get, out of free as well. You get five of them. No, it's just out of free. I got no, maximum. Right. Oh, you should say it's out, it's out of two. Yeah, I got six out of two. Oh, just to, for those of you who don't, don't know who Pat is, Pat writes for Hot Press, yeah. which is, uh, that's the Irish music magazine that's been going since, what, 1901? 77. 77. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't in it in 1977, no, I might add, but yeah. <laughs> so what was it, and, five, uh, five years ago we met and you interviewed me and I didn't yeah. know who you were then? I was just, well, it's coming up to, 
it's coming up to my five year anniversary in Hot Press, which is in February. So it would have been that year. So one of the first things I, one of the first the things of real note I got to do was, uh, was my, actually it was my first interview with anyone who wasn't Irish in the first place, was I was sent to interview Justin because the editor at the time, the commissioning editor at the time, Roisin, good friend of mine thought, well, that'll be fun if I put the two of them in a room. <laughs> and, uh, and it was. The first and thing you did was there, you our, said... Our uh, beautiful you, friendship went from there. Yeah, you showed me, uh, you showed me the review of Pinewood Smile. And, uh, That's right. And we were laughing about that, and then I saw the mark. It was, uh, you'd given it infinity out of ten. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's I true. may have... I, 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 I might want to take that back, maybe, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. In, 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 in hindsight. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough, I think... Uh, well, where do you go? If you give something, you see, the problem is if I give something infinity out of 10, which I rarely do, mm. but if I give something infinity out of 10, it's very hard to go up from there. You know? Like, yeah. uh, you, know but you needed to give me room for improvement because at the moment now I've shown no improvement in the last five years because there hasn't been any need. Well, that's true. It's only gone down. It's only gone down. It's, it's something akin to for that song Forever in a Day. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Exactly. Can anybody tell me how to get live chat up on YouTube? Does anyone know? Oh my God! Look at this. I've been asked about Ian Bailey straight away. David, give us a <laughs> bit of time to settle in, will you? Before you. Who's, who's Ian Bailey? <laughs> Ian Bailey, the guy in Cork. Do you remember that we spent a whole episode talking about one night? He's the strange one that may or may not have been implicated in a, did a he, murder. Did he? Did he? Careful, careful. Our learned friends might be watching. Did he? Did he? We don't know. So what was the? But I watched that documentary. Right, actually, he just seemed like my a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like um. Oh, yes. It is a book, Mo. It's a Zach book. says hi from Lowestoft. Hey, Zach. How you doing? Oh, Zarak, sorry. All right, Zarak. Zarak, Zarak, Zarak we appreciate that very much. That's nice. That'll buy us a, a cup of tea. Thanks yeah, very much. lovely stuff. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Um, so, but, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So, Ian Bailey was the sort of... He had... I've forgotten what he looks like now. He's sort of ruddy complexion, long straight hair. Yeah. L looks a bit like He's a murderer. English, I mean, to be I fair, think, he looks a little bit sorry, like I, a murderer. Sorry, I've forgotten your name. Who was... Who was in from West Cork there? But you can back me up here. I think he's. I think he's an English guy, who was living in Cork. I don't. I don't know if we should get into this straight away because it is. <laughs> is it? We should do it. It's still ongoing. But we 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 talked about it because it was the documentary on Netflix that everybody was watching, and we talked about it. And I was telling the story about meeting Ian Bailey, which I did one time, and uh, that was yeah, that was interesting. When you met it was him. Interesting. Did you sort of get a mur <clears throat> murderer vibe off him, or was it kind of? <laughs> <laughs> did, well, I, no, did I think? No, because that's not the same as saying he did it. But, I mean, some people have a murderer vibe, don't they? They just have it. I thought he was. Um, let me see. He came over to me. He was at a thing I was working at, and and he came over and he said, "Well, you seem like an interesting guy to have a conversation with." No. And I thought that was strange for someone to say anyway. Mm. You know, uh, and then there was a lot of. Um, I could. Be, I'd say I don't want to open myself to uh, uh, legal action here, but um, <laughs> it's too late for that. Yeah, yeah, it's too late. Yeah, he was uh, he was a lovely guy, and I really liked meeting him, and it was lovely. So I just got to do the intro. Justin Hawkins oh, yes. writes again. That's live. It's live. Now we have the same thing as we we have the same things we had before, where your guitar sounds like it's. Uh, Playing through the distortion pedal. That's going to be anyway. that's going to be your internet. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Got super chat. Super chat started. Penny Star yeah, Productions. Uh, oh, Penny well. Star Productions. Hey, Penny Thank Star you. Productions. Thanks for that. That's Thank lovely. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Pallet says, "Mr. Hawkins, you are the reason I decided to sober up and get my life back in order. So forever grateful." That's very nice. Nice one. Nice Who thing said for that? To say. I didn't see that one. Yeah. I, sorry, I missed it. It's gone up there. It's gone so quickly, you know. It is. Yeah. Uh, Six hundred and twenty-three people. My God, this is amazing. We've never seen numbers like this, Pat. We're, we're breaking We've new never, ground. You know, this is this is <laughs> this is Coldplay at Wembley Stadium numbers for us. <laughs> it really is. Oh, amazing! Should we start off with Coldplay? Hey, look at this, Ray <laughs> Kid. Oh my God, What's Justin, this? huge fan. Thank you, Ray, for that. That's very nice. Wow. Oh, nice one, Ray. Thanks a What's lot. What's your song for your radio, for your radio show, uh, Tanya? Well, the song, the radio show is called The Record Machine. So each episode starts off with a clip from uh, Jump by Van Halen, where he says, I'm standing over by the record machine. Is that what you mean? That's the one. Damn, 20 pounds, says Jake McMurray. Yeah, Jake, take note. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a good Christmas. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, I've already, I'm already sensing this once a month. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, or, or once a week. Uh, yeah. is that, right, well, a question here, sorry. Is there any point as a middle-aged man? Sorry, they're going so fast, I can't uh, stop them here. Can These you scroll people up coming to in them? And stuff here. Is there any point as a middle-aged man creating an original band as all pubs and customers want cover bands? Mm. I've been playing for 20 years and I've been in both in the past. Ask Chris Lawton. That's a good question, Chris. Uh, no, there's no band. There's no bands in any pubs where I live at the moment, unfortunately. But uh, I do. T- it, it's unless a good they, point. Unless they finish Just by uh, seven fifty-nine, isn't it? Are, are they like? Um, is the curfew still going? Eight o'clock. Yeah. Eight o'clock. Yeah, curfew still here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good question that that you asked there. I think that. Uh, yeah, I do. Covers bands. When you I was doing band. covers. Yeah, yeah. We, everyone starts off on covers, but I think. Um, just because you're middle aged, is that the question really? Just because you think people aren't interested in Well, if he's been doing it for twenty years, he's probably around our age or your age, should I say. Yeah. I'm a bit older than just as you can tell, probably. Well mm, I think it's um it'll still have an audience, won't it? It might be a little bit more selective. I mean, pop music is kids, isn't it? I mean it is kids. It's it's people who are in their late yeah. teens, early twenties. Well, you know, I mean you know. pop is the biggest selling uh, the biggest selling record at the moment. If you go into any record shop, it, it probably there thereabouts is probably Fleetwood Mac rumors, uh, you know, on vinyl. It seems to be in every, they seem to put it out every six months. So, mm. I mean, that's an exception, of course. I also but, think there's a I certain mean? type of music which can only be done by a person of a certain age, you know, because the mm. songs that sort of speak to a lifetime of heartbreak, you can't write those when you're 15. You just can't. Unless you've been, you know, yeah. <laughs> sexually active since, well, I mean, you won't have been, will you? So you just don't. It all comes from experience, doesn't it? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, uh. And there are exceptions to that, obviously. Um, well, David, King, David King says, uh, I have fallen in love with the darkness again in the past few months. Cheers, guys. Nice one, David. Awesome. Good man. Good man, they're great. And, Hello uh, from Poland. Hello to you. Name <laughs> I can't pronounce. Um, Michael B. just thank said... Thank you for um, these donations, by the way. This yeah, is, this it's lovely, fantastic. isn't it? We didn't expect that at all. We are obliged to answer Do you like ones. the who? I love the who. Yeah. Michael B says, "Do you like Cheap Trick?" I do. I like Cheap Trick. You, you we talked about them before. I saw them support Def Leppard, and uh, frankly, uh, apologies. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Tuned in. <laughs> yeah, but they kind of knocked them off the stage that night, you know. And it yeah. was the night. It was the night of the um, twenty or thirty years of Hysteria, or whatever it was. It was the celebration. So they played Hysteria when they came on, and the hits are at the start. I think. Of his I don't know the record too well, but the stuff I recognised was at the start. So after about forty-five minutes, you go, "Fucking hell! How long is this album? <laughs> and when can I go back to the bar? And can they bring Cheap Trick back out? Mm. You know, they were very good. They were great. Did he do all of his um, plectrum tricks and all that stuff? He did. Yeah, he did. And he had I've the never... guitar with the four, four or five necks and everything. Oh, yeah. and, uh, they were doing stuff like Surrender and I Want You To Love Me, I Want You To Want Me, and ah, great, yeah, it was really good. Mm. And then, yeah, Def Leppard came on. And Def Leppard, don't get me wrong, Def Leppard put on a great show and they looked fantastic and, you know, um, uh, Joe Elliott was giving it socks and the hits were great, but I just, you'd want to really be in love with the record. Uh, Cahill Carney says, I love Pat's hot press articles. Cahill, uh, greetings from New York City. We should reveal that uh, Cahill and I knew each other when I lived in New York City about 25 years something ridiculous years ago so. <laughs> months ago yeah um max yeah, lister says 26 uh, 27 years ago something ridiculous this one's for you as well pat um max lister says um can you react to the closing minute of waiting yeah. on the war which is the foo fighters song that i analyzed uh the second foo fighters song that i analyzed did you listen to that uh, i was thinking well i'll tell you i was thinking about that because i saw that video and uh, sorry, if you don't see those videos, they're all available on Justin Hawkins Rides Again on YouTube, which you're watching right now, so you are familiar yeah. with it. But uh, I reviewed that album when it came out, and I gave it a fairly good review. And I kind of, when I was listening to it again, when Justin was playing it, I was kind of thinking, God, maybe I was a bit generous to some of this stuff. I don't think it's the, I don't what? think they're the greatest band in the world. But, you uh, don't? They're a bit, I'll tell you what I think, right? I think they're all right, but they're a bit uh, meat and potatoes. Pedestrian? Without the gravy, without oh. the fixings, you know. Whereas I you think know, a lot the, of people the, don't like the darkness because the, da- the, the darkness is only kind of like accoutrement sauce and gravy without the meats and the potatoes. That's, that's wrong. 
Ron, the darkness is a is a four course meal uh-huh. with uh, you know which a takes sandwich. your palate it's, it's in when, a different you, you direction. You go to a fancy restaurant, you know you go to a fancy restaurant and they say, well, this is this celebrity chef in here, and you go, oh yeah, yeah, and what he has is he has a sampler meal where you get a sample of each ten of the courses, dishes. maybe a darkness album. Is mm. And it has course. an accompanying a, wine a turkey, for every a turkey stuffed inside a, a turkey inside a duck stuffed inside a goose mm-hmm. wrapped in pate and all served in a lobster sauce. Yeah, something like that. And that's just the uh, what's that that's called? The hors d'oeuvre, hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, that's just de- that's just decked here. <laughs> Which is your absolute favourite darkness song? I think. Oh, I love it! I can't live without that song. <laughs> Um, the cacophony <laughs> sessions have donated the five menu. pounds. Sorry, that's what I was, S. O'Reilly. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> S. O'Reilly, you're dead right. Tasting menu. Um, uh, cacophony sessions have donated five pounds, and they say a donation from us at the Cacophony Sessions podcast for your hard work. We would love to have you on as a guest. Do you mean me and Pat? That'd be great, wouldn't it? We come on. That would be fun. But I understand if it's only Justin. By the way, or if it's just Pat, I'm uh, also cool with Cam. that. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Cam from Cork asks, he, and he gives a donation as well, so thanks very much. Or, or I presume it's to him, I don't know. Um, and thanks very much. Do I remember an Irish trash band called Judgment from Cork? I don't, but a band I was kind of in in college were called Misjudgment, and the pun was, <laughs> it was misjudgment, and also misjudgment, and mm-hmm. we were shit. So, there you go. See, but I don't that, remember that's that. That's the Sorry, thing Cam. about Pat, he's also his own harshest critic. Um Andrew no, we Christie says, sure. seeing we you guys sure. at the Novo in March. First time seeing you live. Can't wait. Awesome, Andrew. I think you'll be uh, <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> suitably blown away. <laughs> Star Guitar Works. Star Guitar Works says there's $20 in it if Pat lets Justin talk for five seconds. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I don't want That's to. money well money. spent. <laughs> That's it. Um, I don't Ra- need your money. <laughs> Rachel Diaf says, um, hey, Justin, come to Ipswich in Suffolk or Shitwich, as it's affectionately known. Lovely. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> we'll, all, we'll all be in uh, We'll all be on the west coast of England uh, in twelve months' time. Uh, oh, is this wait? Is this um, something to do with? Oh, the uh, east coast, the east coast of England. I'm sorry. Is this because? Do only donated questions get answered? To Tom Newton asks. No, Tom. There you go. And I've answered your question. There you go. Uh, nice kitchen, dude. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, we, we can talk about that later on. That east coast. What are you talking about? I don't understand. What, what's the thing? Are you talking about climate change? New Year's change? Eve, 2020. Oh, yeah, that thing. Oh, oh sorry. That. I thought you were saying that, like, <laughs> I thought this was one of your climate change conspiracy theories where, uh, I don't know, one of the... No, um, that's you, boss. I don't do oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, thing. okay. I was going to say, I was really excited to see you talking in that way. <clears throat> uh, Colin asks, Colin asks, what are my thoughts on YouTube? Colin, we don't have time for that. We, we'll be here for the next <laughs> three weeks. All right, uh, one word thought on YouTube. We, we regularly Definitely. talk about YouTube. Go on, one word. Pretty good. That's two, two words. words. Good. Pretty good. Could be hyphenated. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, I, like I, 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 I am sure. going to try and respond to the, the super chat ones, and, and we'll try and answer as many as possible. Yeah. There's just so many comments. And the first one, um, what was it like working with the male brothers, and did they contribute anything toward the recording of the cover? You're talking about the Sparks cover that I did. Um, I didn't. Um, they didn't record anything in the studio with me, but they were really supportive of it and obviously appeared in the in the video and I had a couple of dinners with them. I just thought they were lovely people to hang around and really enjoyed getting to know them a bit. But, um, you know, they they just did a cameo in the video, really. Mm. Quasar's Castle you, says... You uh, like... What? What do you say? You like Sparks, though. I love Sparks. Why? Don't you like Sparks? Mm. Oh no! Not particularly, no. Why? Yeah, mm. not anything I've heard because I've got mates here in this island as well who rave about them. I think they're one of the greatest things ever. And I had spent some time listening to some of those records with some of those friends and went, "I don't really get it, lads." I think it's heavy wading at the first when you first try and get into their catalogue. But if you if you actually stick on, uh just any of the albums, actually, and then go for a run. Go for a little mm. run. Just listen to it. Well, well, I mean, that's my problem straight away. Yeah, I think I see. consume a lot that's of music like whilst running. <laughs> <laughs> you do good in both senses. Yeah, I don't. That's not my, that's not my normal way I listen to records. Um, if you had to pick one. What's that one called one where they're on the speed, one of their albums. The, the speed boat, when they're tied up on a speed boat. What's that one called again? I don't know. 
It's not called Come On On My House in here. No, no, not that one. Yeah, I, li- I do like that one, but um, I've actually forgotten what it's called. What's that one called? Guys, tell me, the one with the Someone, speaker. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Johnson says uh, big, Sparks Big Music. Is that what you said, Johnny? Sorry, this is flying, but the Sparks Big Beat uh, is a fantastic album. There you go, says Johnny Johnson. You're not anything to Johnny Johnson used to play the piano for Chuck Berry, are you? Probably not. <laughs> Have you seen Mike Both's comment? I haven't. Sorry, these are flying. So we're not I used know. to this being hit <laughs> so much. Normally we have yeah. ages to sort of linger on all the comments, but not today. Yeah, yeah we kind of, you know, this is a bit frenetic. Oh, almost. look at this question. Slash or Billy Duffy uh, I have discuss? To read out the look at that. Slash or Billy Slash Duffy? Slash or Billy Duffy? My God. Ooh. That's good. I think Billy. I think Billy Duffy maybe. Really? I think Billy Duffy is. I love Billy Duffy's guitar playing. I love Billy Duffy's I love guitar Slash playing as well. as well. But I think Slash is such an icon. He invented playing lead guitar using the rhythm, you know, the the, the pickup selection that's marked rhythm on a Les Paul, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is in itself a yeah. rebellious act. I mean, everything about him is just uh, iconography. It's amazing. I interviewed Slash. He's a, he's a very nice bloke. Is he? Uh, and someone mentioned John, Johnny Marr. I interviewed Johnny Marr as well. And I, uh, someone was asking, uh, Justin, what do you think of the Smiths, Johnny Marr? On this thing, since we started, we've done loads of Smith songs. We're mm. huge fans. And Justin's <laughs> version of Every Day is Like Sunday is something to savor, really. It really is. You know? <laughs> it really is. I, <laughs> yeah, my, I in, think in my, best, um, my best Morrissey <laughs> moment, though, has got to be... Um, when I do Hairdresser on Fire, to groans of appreciation. People love that one. Yeah. Well, I didn't know the song. It was new to me. And, it's all uh, new to me. you know, it was great in a, in a way. Uh, <laughs> someone has asked her, get Pat some headphones. I actually bought some headphones. He's got some. Uh, right. he but, I, but I don't use them, you know. Because it interferes with my barnet, you know, my beautiful do. Mm-hmm. You don't know how long I spent in makeup here. This is all, this is stuck on beard. So I can avoid the tax man because these things are coming in so quick. <laughs> oh, look at this question. Would you play into your 70s like Mick Jagger says winter chills? I think you would. You reckon I'm going to? Oh, would you? I don't know. That's a good question. <sighs> I don't know. Hey, I reckon I would actually because I think by that point the children will be, they won't care if I'm there or not. Whereas I think at the moment it's a little bit difficult because it's kind of like, why must you leave me, father? It's difficult. Mm. 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 Yes. Well, of course, we don't. You, would you do a thing like um, Coldplay and have, uh, first of all, as you, as you examined in one of your videos, and I was on the radio talking about it not long ago as well. Um, oh, yeah, but I think your, your take <clears throat> on it, if I may interject at this point, I'm <laughs> I think your take on Coldplay announcing no more music was to do like a, something that looked a bit like the river dance. Is that right? Of jubilation. Yeah. I mean, they had a thing about, um, they were talking about, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll try and get to as many of these as we can. This is what happens. They had a thing about the, the kinetic floor uh, where you go in. Not only would you pay 80 quid for a ticket, mm. but you'd have to go in and then provide the electricity as well because uh, it's a brave new world. And there was something about, um, what do you call them? What do you call those bikes that you see in the gym? The, uh, oh, whatever um, you call those exercise bikes, you know, an what, exercise bike. I think that's a, a stationary yeah, cycling exercise unit. Two words. Mm. And uh, you'd be providing the electricity, and I thought this was weird. And then they asked me on the radio, did I, had I ever seen Coldplay play? And I had once, and I didn't. I wasn't. I was brought by someone else. I wasn't paying an awful lot of attention. And uh, I was at the back where the bar is, mm. and I was thinking, wow, if if the lights dipped in that scenario. Would Chris Martin shout, Oi, Cardi, get up on that bike there. We can't play the next song. You know, we can't do uh, Fix You or whatever it is yeah. if you don't get up on that bike. It seems strange to me, you know? Yeah. So would you do that? What, do like, um, oh, like tour into my 70s, but have like a green measures in place yeah, that, that yeah. help to elevate your heart rate and keep the light show going. Is that what you're asking? Mm. Yeah, Something I mean, like I that, think as yeah. long as there's no impact on the planet, I think by all means, tour as much as you like, lads, you know, isn't it? Electric tour bus, it would have to be. Maybe solar powered. Of course. You can only go, you can only go from 200 miles from your house, though, then. No? Yeah, well, I quite like that as well. That's, you know. Or it could be <laughs> like, a, <laughs> it could be like, um, could be like in Night Rider, you know, when, when the 
Night Industries 2000 goes yeah, inside a, a bigger a yeah. bigger truck. So you'd have like a huge, like um, maybe an aircraft hangar, uh, aircraft, what's it called? Mm. A warship or something. And then you drive the, the bus onto there, it recharges and then drops you somewhere else along the like, coast, yeah, yeah. you know, on your days off, of course, which would be nice. Oh, of course. Uh, we're trying to get through as many as I see uh, things going. Bridget Young uh, says, Stellar Beard, Mr. Carty, when did you know dead certain you wanted to be a writer? I think Motorheart is fantastic, Justin. Can't wait to get my face melted. Uh, I, I, I tried it when I was a young fella, when I was a young man in college. I used to write for a, a magazine in the college, and then life got in the way, and I went off and was doing stuff to make money, and then I, I, it was, when I was 45, I got a chance to do this. So n never worry about what age you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, it happened like that. Now, I, I only do it for fun. I mean, you know, there's no money in it. So if anyone goes into this looking for money or anything like that. Know, Although Bridget is providing us. Uh, yeah, Mike both Bridget has, has just bought us two pints of beer there. You know, so we incredible. thank you for that. A non-alcoholic um, lager. Tom point. Newton. Tom Tom Newton as well, who also contributed, said he's a journalist for 20 years, but he hasn't made the jump into digital content. And he's wondering, was there any advice? Um, Tom, I, I, my own experience, I think you have, you have to do both if you can. You know, uh, the printed word is, is under threat. But uh, so do both that would be my advice. If that's any help to you, I don't know if it is. Uh, do both no, as in which we? options? Do both as in Slash and Billy Duffy? I'm so confused now. What are we on? Well, yeah, well, that would be my, my friend Lynette's answer would be, yeah, do both Slash and Billy Duffy. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> totally. I won't tell that story, Lynette. Right. No, no. You've just, no more, I think we've got a synopsis of it now. Um, mm. Thoughts more on Aerosmith Jim Steinman. More Andrew, uh, Christy. I would, I would agree, Andrew, yeah. Um, thoughts on Jim Steinman? Uh... It's not it's 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 not my cup of tea, but I can see what's appealing about it. I, was, I went on the radio to talk about him when he passed away as well, and they asked me. They gave me about an hour's notice. I got a phone call. I said, "Would you come on the radio and talk about Jim Steinman?" And I said, "I don't know anything about Jim Steinman." Mm. And basically, they made me feel very good by saying, "We can't get anyone else. Will you do it anyway?" <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I I, I swatted up on him, but um. Yeah, I think that meatloaf's bad out of hell, and Justin will probably back me up on this. When I was a, a young child, I think the government were handing those out to older brothers and sisters around the British Isles because everybody had it. It was in everybody's house, so you couldn't escape it. So success as a songwriter and a producer, yeah, there you go. Everybody had the record. But do you remember, um, no. do you remember have you heard his, the solo record, Bad for Good? No. no. There's a couple of things on there that really are amazing. Um, there's, mm. there's an instrumental called The Storm and I'm always sort of putting it forward as uh, walk-on music for the, for the darkness it's just epic it's really wow. great okay. some great stuff Jack's, Jack's Shed here says uh, Jim Steinman wrote some of the best music available on earth there you go can't argue with there you Jack are. that's it you know each yeah. to their own absolutely uh, have you heard of Wet Leg I heard of them tonight Ollie because Neil McCormack who writes for one of the papers in England who's a pal, was, is, at their, is at a gig of theirs tonight. And he put up a picture of it and he said, this is the band that you're hearing all about, Wet Leg. As you say, there's two female lead guitarists, which there should be more of. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I don't know, I don't know the music, sorry. Uh, um, how about the loss of Ronnie Spector, says Chrissy 60 Yeah, I was on the radio yesterday playing Ronnie Spector songs. Uh, I loved her voice. And especially those early Ronette singles are just amazing, I think, yeah. The ones with her husband, who's a murderer, so we won't mention his name. Well, it wasn't, wasn't that an accident, though? <laughs> Here's a great one. Here's a great one. 365 Days of Drawing says, Coldplay was literally the first thing I heard after a very short stay in prison, and I kind of half wanted to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I've got to answer this one. Have Pat. you ever heard of Hot Leg? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, sorry. No. <laughs> Kietilberg, who we know well from our usual Sundays, um, he's asked three or four times now. I've got to answer it. JCM 800 or the JH 3000? Oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I, love a, I like the saturation of a JCM 800, but I think in terms of pure smashing you in the face and also having a logo that involves me sort of semi-aroused whilst playing a solo, it's got to be the JH 3000 every motherfucking time. There you go. You can't argue with that. 
And uh, uh, thanks a lot to the people of Laney who are tuning in. Uh, Netherweed asked there, have I ever heard of a band called Hot Leg? I, I have. I went to see Hot Leg and uh, it was very strange. It was, in a stra- it was in a small place here in Dublin and uh, we went in and we'd all had a few drinks, but I, I think some of the guys on the stage had had a few drinks as well. And, uh, <laughs> That's possible. Uh, one, the, the, the person who was singing and playing guitar, I think, was a bit angry that night. Uh, it was what? a strange Never. night. Hmm. Yeah, I, it, I, think you, I, I, I think you were anxious to get off the stage. That night, that's what it's do to be. do anything else. It does yeah, happen. Yeah, it does happen. To get back to the dressing room, I think he was anxious to do that. Yeah. Uh, Biffy Clyro, I don't know them very well, but a mate of mine is their in-house photographer, and speaks very highly of them. I met those guys. I think I presented an award to them once. I think it was a Kerrang Award or something, mm. best live band or whatever. I thought that they were. Really nice people. That goes a long way, doesn't it? There you go. Scottish, mm. Scottish crowd, aren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah, of course they are. The Scottish crowd. Uh, Tina, George asked, Tina George asked Oasis or Blur, both Tina. Mm. Um, yeah, I at think. different times, definitely. <coughs> okay, here's one for you, Pat. Uh, wet, 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 or bros? Which is the same question. Wet, wet, wet. Really? It's got to be wet, both, Wet, 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 all day long. Both. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you for the why. Um, first of all, I thought Marty Pello had a nice voice, and they had a song called on one of their albums. It might have been the title track of one of their albums called "Hold Back the River," which I happened to hear somewhere. It wasn't a single or anything like that. This is way back, and it was a real proper soul record with a great arrangement, like Willie Mitchell style arrangement. It was really good. Now there, I listened to the rest of the album; wasn't great, but that was a really good song. So, yeah, they went out for that. There you go. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what about um, who produced um, Bros then? Was that Stock Aitken and Waterman? Was it? I don't think I don't, it was. I don't know. I'm asking the question actually. I'm not sure. When will I, will I be famous? Yeah, I didn't think they were great. <laughs> um, uh, it, actually, you saw the documentary where they got back together. The Bros one, yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, it was a classic. Oh, that was, that's genius. That's pure genius. That's, that's one of the greatest things you could ever see it's really really funny if did you haven't you, seen um, it go and find it did you it. buy into it as Absolutely. a narrative or did you think it was fake i don't care it was really I yeah that's a good I point actually so it's a great bit of entertainment but great. you know that the, the drummer if from it, if Bross, it's fake if it's fake it's even more genius if 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 they put that together as a, as a but like, that's my theory i think it i think it's totally fake and i, I think um because that i was always impressed with the drummer from Bross because he he played the baddie in um hellboy the Golden Army, which is the sequel to the first Ron Pellman Hellboy. And uh, Blade 2, which is a fantastic He's film. He's in Blade 2, is bad guy in that oh, as well. Okay. So, yeah. so I thought, he's someone who's that good at sort of, you know, mixed martial arts and sword work and looking mean. There's no way he's going to stand mm-hmm. there and... Like myself. And, like me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it'd be like if you did a, a documentary with that kind of stuff happening in it, nobody would believe it. They'd just know that it was fake. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah. Be good. Um, FM Forever says Coldplay or a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Is there mustard on this ham sandwich? <laughs> what kind picture? of ham? Yeah. Uh, there's an Irish band called who I know called Ham Sandwich. So maybe you mean that? Oh, okay. Who are yeah. who are who are lovely lovely people? If it has too uh, much Justin, mustard on that ham sandwich, sorry, go ahead. If it has too much mustard on that ham sandwich, it would be all yellow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Coldplay joke, isn't it? Frankly, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I think we should say good night after that. It's not get <laughs> See you later, guys. That's, That's the highlight. It. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> Send them home sweating. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, sorry, these are coming in awful quick, and we're 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 uh, doing our best here to try and get as many. He was the lead Reaper vampire in Blade Two. Yeah, that was a good movie. That mm-hmm. are the Ramones overrated? No, they're underrated. Steve, I reckon, especially the first three or four albums are absolutely brilliant. And if you can get the first one uh, for an anniversary there some time ago, they put it out with, in mono for I don't know whatever reason, and Jesus, it knocks you over if you put it on. It's fantastic. Anyway, and actually. Talking about uh, Ronnie Spector, uh, she covered one of their songs, and they covered her song, Baby I Love You, with Phil Spector producing. So without Ronnie, without the Ronettes, no Ramones. 
Mm. So it's all connected. What happened with Phil Spector again? Well, Phil Spector was convicted of murder and went to prison and died in prison, as far as I know. Oh, okay. He was a very, very strange man. Very strange man. I remember someone who was connected to you too telling me a story about him. Uh, when he was on, when they were doing their Zoo TV tour, one of the big ones, and he turned up for the gig in Los Angeles. And everybody kept passing him to everyone else. You talk to Phil, you talk to Phil, because they all just wanted to get the hell away from him. Mm. Uh, you know. But do you think that's because of the trauma caused by all of his, all of his success? Do you think he was like, um, or was he always... I don't, I don't know. I, I think he kind, of, he kind of retired, semi-retired when the British invasion took off in America because mm. he was maybe he thought he was old hat or something like that oh, those, those great records and then River Deep Mountain High wasn't a big hit as it should have been and all this kind of thing but then there's stories her biography because she was married to him uh, Ronnie Spector obviously that's where she got the name and uh, you know he used to do crazy things like she couldn't leave the house if she left the house without him whether this is true or not good story though if she was in the car without him she had to have this kind of blow up doll that looked a bit like him sitting in the seat so other men wouldn't look at her you know, he wasn't, uh, oh, right. I don't think he was very well. Yeah. Okay. He I mean, had something to do with, um, there's no coming back from What that. did he have to do with uh, Let It Be? Was there something, did he pr- produce a version of that or something? He did. The one that's the original one, um, he put all the strings on it. So say something like, um, the Long, uh, and, winding the long and Winding Road. Yeah, he destroyed that. Well, he, McCartney always claimed he destroyed it. And then when they put out, let it be naked about 20 years ago. And they took all the stuff off. I thought it sounded better. And the one that came out last year, that Giles Martin remixed, I think that sounds better, but it's still... Um, yeah, he threatened John Lennon with a gun, says Sam Phillips. Yeah, he worked with Leonard Cohen as well on a strange album. Um, I don't know. And then it, maybe all things must pass. There's a lot of people who claim he ruined that, and I'd agree with them, um, that it's just too much... There's too much stuff poured over the top. Mm. I think. He was a mental, says the Rev. There you go. The Rev is right. But he was the kitchen sink guy, you know, somebody who lives by the, you know, his, the ideals that he, that his <laughs> production represents, you know, I mean, it's, of course he's going to be extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, listen, those records, those Ronette records and, and the production is amazing on the wall of sound. It's fantastic. I'm not knocking him as a producer. Just he was a bit of a monkey shite fight of a human being. That's all. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know? Fair enough, actually. All right. Well put. I don't, I don't think I get too many people disagreeing with that. That he wasn't a monkey shite fight of a human being. He was. Oh, I mean, he was. I That's obviously. I, right. I, yeah. I would maintain he was. <laughs> Cold player Machine Gun Kelly asked Michael B. I, I, I'd, I'd like to sit that one out, Michael, if that's all right. Wow. Um, That's a really good question. Mm. You, list, you reviewed you reviewed Machine Gun Kelly recently. Well, I don't know if I reviewed it. I sort of analysed it in on the basis that it was sort of a lot of people were dismissing it as a plagiarism because it has the same chord sequence as um, "Where Is My Mind," more or less. And um, yeah, but it's in a different yeah. key. But but the weird thing I thought was that the melody was this was like a, an, an approximation of what one of the guitar parts in "Where Is My Mind" is. But it was the Guitar part didn't change key. It was it's nerdy stuff, but it but the way they related to the chords was mm. was actually it certainly different. is. Yeah, <laughs> it's really dull stuff. But um, so I was just yeah. sort of defending him on the grounds that you can't really accuse him of plagiarism because it wasn't, you know. But uh, having said that, uh, and also if he pisses people off, that's good. He's a punk, you know. These are strange ones coming in. Uh, Jason Dower said. Uh, Rory Gallagher discussed. I think I maybe I turned you on to Rory Gallagher a bit yeah. when I was writing about it. Yeah, him, you did. Because yeah. I sent you a couple of records. I was yeah. um, sort of a little bit resistant to Rory Gallagher because, um, you know, I was the only bits I'd heard was kind of like blues live stuff that I'd heard in my mother-in-law's kitchen, which is not the I, you know, I'm, I wasn't always receptive to sort of taking music advice from my mother-in-law. Um, but when you told me I, about I it, that. suddenly it was like, oh yeah, here we go. And um, and again, a few forest runs. Listening to um, is it photo finish? What's that one? The what's the ones I like? Photo again? finish, yeah. Photo oh, finish. That's my, that's my favorite one. Yeah. What's the first song on that again? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Follow it's kind me. Of, uh, cruise cruise on out. It's the real fast one. Yeah. Ah oh, okay, and then you were thinking of the one after. What's that I one think called? Of the one after the album after. Um, 
Follow me. Won't you follow, follow me where I'm bound? That one. That's a great one, yeah. Every time I listen, there's a lot of these. Sorry, there's a lot of these coming in. We're trying to Genesis. Who can convince you, podcaster? I think they might have been on earlier on. They asked Genesis or Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Wow. <laughs> what kind of a question is that? Why must we live in a world where you have that's, one or the other? That's like that's like asking, would you would you rather be shot with a pistol or a rifle? <laughs> would you like which which of your testicles would you like to have shot? Yeah, Genesis or e- well, I don't know a lot of ELP. I think you know more Genesis. Genesis. I think you're going to have to by default. Yeah, I go I Genesis. Yeah, yeah. I think if you had to, yeah. Mm-hmm. On the subject of George Harrison, asked Joel Morris with a lovely donation. Thank you, Joel. Uh, do you guys think George plagiarized? She's so fine, and my sweet lord. Yeah, actually, he says my sweet load, which is a different song altogether. I think my sweet load. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, of course he did. Maybe not subcon- Maybe he's not consciously, but yes, very much. It's the same song. Over Johnny Thunders, yeah, great. Who said that? Tom? Astrid. Oh, God, 100%. look at this. Here's the question. Astrid says, Pat or Justin? Why must we choose, Ooh. Astrid? I don't want to live in a world without Pat. There's, you know, it's a big world. There, there's room for two of us. The, the reason I live in Dublin and Justin lives in Switzerland is because there's enough ground in between us to... Mm put two egos together on the same yeah. continent without them rubbing up against each other. That's true. How about ELO, says Rebecca. Love ELO. Love him. Interviewed your man, Jeff. What's his face? Lynn. Lovely bloke. Really nice guy. Does ketchup go in the fridge or the cupboard, says United Ant. The fridge. I'm not an animal. I'm not a farmer. Ant. It's got to go in the fridge. You're quite right. I agree with that. Once you open it, it has to go in the fridge. Uh, uh, this is getting ridiculous. Cold player James Corden. No, they both have to go into the sea. I'm sorry, uh, sci-fi, sci-f. Wow, that's interesting. James Corden. Mm. I mean, he did sing along with uh, Gary Barlow in that documentary where the documentary closed with James Corden. <laughs> James Corden saying, um, "They always say to you, See, don't, don't, don't meet your heroes, this but obviously the their heroes on aren't, aren't I, Gary Barlow." I can go and make a cup of tea now. Yeah, no. Yeah. Exactly. Just Once let, Justin starts talking about Gary no. Barlow, I can make a cup of coffee. I can fold the laundry. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. No, I, I only insofar as it relates to James Corden. I think there was a the, James Corden did like a what would can only be described as a visual puff piece. It was supposed to be a documentary, sort of talking about meeting Gary Barlow, but um, it ended with him singing a song right. with him. And um, honestly, all the way through that song, I was like, "Oh, I'm going to be sick! I'm going to be sick!" But I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was just excruciating and sort of kind of just like car crash. It was wonderful. I loved it. Strongly recommend. Mm. Yeah, uh, you're not. You're, tell us about your your love of Gary Barlow. Tell us some more about that. Uh, how I you feel fond, about Gary? Barlow. Yeah, I'm fond of Gary Barlow because I think he's sort of um, so so harmless and so adorably kind of. Mm. I don't know. What's how would you describe it? I think when I, the thing that really gets me about him is the um, the crooner sessions during lockdown, and it's great that he's doing those things because he's using his sort of celebrity contacts to entertain folk. But I didn't understand why, yeah, yeah. whatever the song was, he was always playing the keyboard and both of his hands were always visible in the frame. Like, um, and he's playing stuff like um, Signed, Sealed, Delivered by Stevie Wonder. How come his hands are there? Just in one... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I presume you're pointing to this comment. Who is the guy on the right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's time. Uh, Chris it's time. Ashby asks, who is the guy on the right? It's me, I presume, Chris, you're talking about. I think so how are you doing? Uh, yep. Chris, uh, I will. Explain. I think as well. Sorry, this 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 question has been asked a couple of times. Cyborg Slays has asked this question a couple of times, so we should address it. Right. He asked, "Can bands come along now and do it full time?" That's good. You would know. Uh, well, we both know the answer to this, but you go ahead. Oh, God. can bands do it full time? Yeah, it's, you, a, it's a good question. Anybody can do anything full time. Are you guys familiar with that? Um, there's an artist called um, Cam Cole. You know who that is? He's like a guy, he's a one-man band. Yeah, he plays, not name. Yeah, he's, he uses his feet to play drums and, it, and he plays sort of grunge music with an old, old guitar. He's only got four strings on it and he sings really well and he's, and he's got a tattoo on his nose. I've seen videos of him outside the train station and all that. And yeah, he, he's a street performer, um, drives around in a van yeah. and has 100% commitment to doing his thing all the time. Like, it's, full t- it's beyond full-time, it's a lifestyle for that guy. And I think he's really inspiring because then, then suddenly yeah. he pops up on... Um, 
the Ted Lasso program as the, as the guy who stands in for uh, Robbie right. Williams. That's um, nice, yeah. And you start seeing him, and he's and he's so omnipresent and so impressive in the fact that he's Robbie sort Williams. of. Robbie Williams. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's like uh, I don't know. I just think he's he's slowly chipping away at it, and it's becoming a bit more lucrative. He, and you can mm. imagine him sort of just ending up making a, a really great studio album eventually, but informed by these well, experiences on the road, you know. Wouldn't he be kind of like, because um, I was talking to someone in uh, in a record company the other day about um, Ed Sheeran and how much, you know, how much ridiculous money Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran played a, a, a tour in Ireland the last time he was here and he played, I think he played every stadium that we have in Ireland. You know, he, and he just went around, but he just, he rocks up with his guitar and his echo pedal and that's, there's no production costs, you know, <laughs> it just turns up and, and takes all this money home, which is great mm. for him. I mean, he's terrible, but you know. Uh, so maybe your man could be a kind of an Ed Sheeran with, uh, with yeah, some taste, but, maybe. Uh, like an old fashioned you know? one man band thing. I mean, he might do stuff with Loopers, I don't really know. He's probably developing his set even as we speak. Um, John Hassel. Would he, would he, John have, would he have the two uh, the symbols in between his legs and go, my old man's a dust man, <laughs> play the triangle on his head, mm. all that kind of stuff? Yeah, and uh, he does all that. Yeah, he's got it, he's got it all. And, and mm. I think he's got like a horn uh, underneath his elbow as well, so when he's playing guitar. Oi, oi. Yep. Oi, oi. <laughs> oh. oh, that one. Um, John Hassel. Of, <laughs> John Hassel says, uh, my mate used to extort Gary Barlow's dinner money off him at school. <laughs> good. That's bullying. That's no good. Uh, Des Spatchcock says, Pat's microwave is tiny. No, Des, it's far away. Mm, that's a huge kitchen. It's far away. It is tiny because it had to fit into the kitchen was done before I bought the place, so it had to fit in there. Des, it's a good question, and it's the, it's what people want to know. Mm. Uh, what is the, is the question? How come your microwave so tiny? Yeah, <laughs> didn't know. Or it, it's like the prince joke when uh, the lover said to prince, "How come your organ is so small?" And he said, "Well, didn't know I was playing in a cathedral." Oh, oh, amazing. Okay, <laughs> so um, Kietil has asked a, a good one. In, in Oslo in 2020, we played Tie Your Mother Down with a drunk guy. This is guy. exhausting. This is exhausting, by the way, because it's going so fast. That, yeah, it is actually. We'll, we'll just keep going until keep we going. drop. Um, was that planned or staged? No, but there was a guy in the crowd who just kept set, shouting, Queen, do some Queen. And I could see that it was pissing Rufus off because obviously his dad's in Queen. <laughs> it wasn't you. It was this drunk bloke in Oslo. <laughs> so, uh, so I said, "Oh, fucking hell! Come on and get up." And I always think that when someone's irritating like that, you get them on stage, and they will eventually hang themselves. Um, not literally, but yeah. figuratively. And um, so he finished um, tying your mother down, and I was like, "Go on, get up! Do do the jump off the off the riser." And he did it, and literally landed on his ass to gales of laughter. It was a wonderful moment. And um, Lovely. yeah, that's what <clears> happens. <throat> uh, does the guy on the right live on Craggy Island? Uh, wow. Could be is argued. That, is uh, that Adam um, Haven, thanks for your contribution. Uh, that's a form of... Um, Father Ted. Ah, yeah. Ah, I see, because of the... Uh, yeah, now I, now I understand it. This is a bit like sitting in the pub with some mates and just two are monopolizing the conversation, so everyone else is passing <laughs> little notes across the table, hoping to join in. <laughs> Welcome to the good. podcast. We do this every Sunday. Sorry, that's great. Edward, Edward, thanks for that, Edward. Yes, that's exactly what it's like, Edward. Whoa, uh, look at this question from Thomas Greaves. This is brilliant. Do you think Okay, yeah. Do you think we will ever get or ever have another Michael Jackson or Freddie Mercury? That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't um I don't maybe maybe entertainment and the way people consume entertainment has split so much that music isn't as music is very important to people who it's important to, of course, but uh um, maybe, you know, will we have a superstar like that again? Although Adele is, you know, very different from those two guys, but she sells in that kind of range, I suppose. So it's possible. Be great. Great entertainer. I mean, Michael Jackson, obviously, you wouldn't have him babysitting your kids or anything like that, but great entertainer, you know. Um, also, uh, what about how Michael Jackson came about, though? He was child star turned into dancing icon i suppose Queen. i suppose doing doing the um you know doing the moonwalk is a little bit like a tiktok <laughs> thing isn't it something like that <laughs> what are you laughing at <laughs> not just these questions that are coming up sorry they're all flying by so quick uh 
Will there ever be another Pat Carty? I, I doubt it, Des. Uh, I doubt it's it. Unlikely. I doubt it. I, I have two. Uh, I have two children, but they're they're both. Uh, not, not, I shouldn't use the word, but they they are both female. So I suppose it dies with me, Des. Thanks for asking. Mm. Um, I think we should um, re- reply to Quasar's Castle. They've, they've. Um, I saw uh, that. Yeah, yeah. They he keep, wants us um, to listen to a song. I don't know. What if is this? Is what, what we're doing? To do it? Running out of money, trying to get you guys to react to this song. What song is it? Quasar's Castle. Should we do that live? How do we do that? How does one do that? That's dangerous. That might be dangerous for him. Will it waste reform? So as Dave, yeah, they will, of course, Dave. Yeah. Um, no, it depends entirely on the uh, artistic considerations. I think yeah, they will. Uh, eventually, they won't be able to turn it down. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think I think uh, and a uh, solo acts they're both kind of they're they're nowhere near as good as the the great Oasis Did singles because um, there was some great singles. You know that um, we often talk about uh, Richard Ashcroft and they were doing like um, an, a, an acoustic album of Verve hits. Um, did you do you know <gasps> Jeez, that song? I gave it away. I gave it away. What I do you got mean? it. Do you remember it was sent to me to review and I, I gave it to someone else? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Um, there's that song he does, which sounds like a, a Motown song. Oh, now you feel like you can't go on. Nothing in life is turning you on. Me and my brother were listening to that and going, <laughs> it'd be really funny if uh, Liam sang this. And he sent me a message yesterday saying, listen to this, Liam sung it. And it's these two guys doing that song and trying to out, mm. when I, I, I put this in very common, shine each other, you know, that Northern oh, shine thing. You, yeah. And it's really, yeah. really cool. I love it. It's cool in the sense well, that JL, JL you like Hendry, that kind of stuff. JL Hendry awesome. says, JL Hendry 1 says, Oasis is the greatest band of all time. Wonderwall is basically the greatest art ever created. Well, good for you, yeah, JL Hendry. I'm glad you enjoy good it. Good to be passionate about stuff. Yeah. You know? Uh, I wouldn't agree with you on that one, but I think they're good. I did like them. Yeah. It'd be interesting if nothing from, the, what, the 26 years since that song can touch it. As regards for recognition factor, just in, in ter- that, that person who made not. that remark's opinion, there's nothing in the last quarter of a century. Uh, sure, why not? Yeah, if that's what you think, fair enough. What would you? I mean, I wouldn't agree, but you know that's okay. That's allowed. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Wonderful. I love good. the way that I'm getting. I'm getting the, the phone is dinging here because people are obviously going. Who's that idiot? And then they, they're finding me on Twitter and following me. So that's very healthy. Yeah. I, I, I encourage that. Numbers. It's numbers, uh, at Pat, At Pat underscore Carty, C-A-R-T-Y. That's where you can find me. All my bullshit. If you think, if you think I'm bullshit, no. You can get it 24 hours a day there. Um, Mike says, Innuendo by Queen is a fantastic song. It transports me back to the moment mm-hmm. when I fell in love with my girlfriend. Such an epic song. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. Which one is in the window dog again? How's says, it uh, Rich. Oh, yeah, great. Uh, what did he say there? Oh, this is a good joke. Metal man. Right. Yeah, um, go ahead. I can't read his name because it's in funny letters, but it says, the, o- <laughs> the Oasis has dried up. <laughs> What's happened there? <laughs> it's just ding, 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 ding. It's great. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Pump or Rocks that's a good question from Andrew Christie both of them Andrew in my opinion I think they're fantastic records I think there's three for me there's there's three Aerosmith records Toys in the Attic Rocks and Pump are the three that I love very much but there's loads of other great Aerosmith records as well as my friend will now tell you all about yeah Toys in the Attic Rocks there's something about uh, Done With Mirrors that's pretty cool as well but only because you can hear the, the strain and it sounds like it sounds like they're not communicating properly, and it's all. If you're interested in the band, it's just great to go back and listen to those things, knowing what they were going through. Actually, like the context. I heard you giving going on about Nine Lives. I you love Nine, Nine Lives. Lives it's a great good. record. That. Yeah, that's the one where they 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 you know don't want to miss a thing. They put that on as an additional thing. It wasn't really you know part of the same session, and that's the thing where Diane Warren yeah, yeah. Uh, invited Steven Tyler over to her house and said, oh, will you just quickly stick a vocal on this for us? And next thing you know, it's in that movie Armageddon, and it's huge, so they had to sort of put it in with the rest of the album. Yeah, there were some artistic considerations, Ooh. but they didn't write that one at all. It was all Diane Warren. And um, I don't even know whether the other guys played on it. I suppose they did eventually. 
but uh, it doesn't really sit with the rest of the yeah, album. Yeah, but that's the thing. Uh, yeah, but the, the thing about that, um, if I can change the subject slightly, that Armageddon movie, I mean, you know, it was proved correct. People will know over Christmas that they watched that Don't Look Up movie, which I didn't really think much of. But um, And the meteor, I don't want to give too much away, but there's something coming towards Earth and things don't work out the way they should. The mistake they made was not putting... Bruce Willis in a space shuttle and sending him up to take care of it. Well, they know? nearly did at the beginning of it. I've they? said they it sent, before. They sent Ron Perlman yeah, up there, didn't they? Yeah but, they didn't, yeah, but they didn't send the right guy. You know, Get Bruce Willis on the case. Mm-hmm. Get it sorted out. If they'd have sent you Ron know, you want Perlman... The job done properly. Ron Perlman as Hellboy would have got it sorted because with his big fist, he would have just punched Oh, the, yeah, yeah. You know. One punch. One punch. One punch. Comic, on Bobo. comic killer. Great. You're right. That is great. <sighs> Honking on yeah. Bobo, yeah. They um, when I met Stephen I Tyler, like he gave me yeah. a he gave me a necklace with a uh, plectrum on it. It said Aerosmith on one side. Unfortunately, it said Honking on Bobo on the other side. Otherwise, it was just a great gift. I still I love that it. Honking on Bobo. Yeah, that's the blues album. That's the blues cover album. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Can you turn I've, your I've notifications off, Pat? All I'm hearing is beep 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 all the time. You got to know, yeah, sorry, on silent. Yeah. I can't help. Wait, professionals, you, you, come you're on. Feeling inadequate because I'm very popular. Yeah, well, mine's going, mine's blowing up as well. I've got actually I've got one. Hang on. Wait a second. Uh, Metal Matt keeps asking us to react to a Metal Matt song. I don't know how we're supposed to hear it, Metal Matt. Uh, and and I don't know if you want us to react to stuff live like that because it can go either way, you know. What's Metal Matt? What's uh, this? Best Tom, best Tom Petty record. Yeah, that's Ooh, a hard one. As damn well, the Gabriel. torpedoes for me. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, Damn the Torpedoes, yeah. It's and I, I like, um, there's one later on called, uh, it's a one-word title, what's the name of it? It's got Billy the Kid on it and things like that. That's a that's a good one as well. Which one's that? It's, it's uh, I don't, what's it called? It's got Billy the Kid on it and uh, You're a Big Girl Now and things like that. That's a good record. And also, I like uh, Wildflowers, his solo record. Mm. I think that's very good as well. He was great. He was really good, yeah. Yeah, he's great. I got to see them once, and they were fantastic. They really were. Um, yeah, it's a ping Domenic at, at Pat's says Victoria. That's true. I, I turned off the notifications now, um, so hopefully it's not going to be. Damien Malka says hi, Justin. Will you ever perform oh. Bald again live? I, I'll already answer that. No, probably. I wouldn't think <clears> so. Well, he can't because of me. You know, because it brings up painful memories. Not memories, they're, they're, they're happening right now. So I don't like him to play that song. Yeah, Pat's, I, I, Pat's it, asked me I never to touch it. I feel it's aimed at me. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there a reason you don't, don't yet, like Pat? Um, will we ever hear the Darkness do a hot leg song? <laughs> what, what the fuck? No, I don't think so, no. I don't think so. I doubt it. <laughs> That's really unlikely, because first of all, I don't want them to. Mm. And second of all, there's <laughs> absolutely no way they would well, want to. That's, that's, <laughs> That's a pretty good answer. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, <laughs> I, don't, I think actually, uh, first I, of all, I don't want them to. Second of all, nobody wants them to. That's that's the reality. I want to answer, answer a question here. Rob Wheatman, uh, Wheatman says, Pat, you said you started on Hot Press in the 70s. Did you ever interview Terry Hooley? First of all, Rob, I didn't start in the 70s. I said the magazine started in the 70s. I was only born in the bloody 70s. Um, Terry Hooley I met at uh, in Belfast at the last concert I was at which was uh, Brona Gallagher and he kept calling me he was introduced to me and he kept calling me Frank all evening but it was Terry Hooley so I couldn't correct him I just went yeah whatever yeah Frank that's my name no problem <laughs> who's, uh, who's Terry, Terry Hooley, Hooley is a, a legend uh, he, he started guy. a label in Belfast in the 70s and uh, he had a record shop in, in Belfast when Belfast was being blown to bits every second day and, uh, you know, he, he basically got the, he kickstarted the undertones, all that kind of stuff in, in the north. And he was the first person to give them a break. Legend of Irish music. Lovely bloke. But he just kept calling me Frank, so I just let him. Whatever. You know. Here's one from Jay Doll Music. Do you have any love for the Red Hot Chili Peppers? No, none at all. No, go ahead, Justin. <laughs> no, but you, um, I think, okay, Red Hot Chili Peppers, they have, what would you say, like two. Well, I do my impression. You can do your impression. Go on, go on. Right, I'll do my impression of the Red Hot Chili Peppers first of all. Every Red Hot Chili Peppers song goes like this. Bang, 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 California. Bang, 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 California. Cox out, California. See? There you go. That's every song you want. Oh, wait. No, that's it. Get it. Yeah, I could do a slightly more in-depth 
dismissal of it if <laughs> if you like. <laughs> I, I always find that to be an upside down band because I think all of the uh, sort of virtuosity comes from the rhythm section. Um, when I listen to John Frusciante playing, mm. I hear no expression in his yeah. lead work at all. It's like there's no vibrato technique, nothing that would, you know, that you'd be able to listen to and go, oh, that's John Frusciante. Apart from the fact that he's got a nice tone, he looks great, and I think he's got a really interesting collection of old, old guitars and those big headstock sort of 70s strats that I love. You know, but I just think the way he plays mm -hmm. is so... No, is pedestrian the right word? It's just it, to me, it's just ha color, colorless. Yeah. It doesn't have any sort of. I can't. <clears> I don't feel any expression when I when he's doing lead work, and and I understand that people love him, and he's probably been through a lot, and he's probably an interesting guy, and some of his music's probably great, but yeah, it's yeah. the playing as a guitarist. It doesn't connect with me at all, and it's sort of weird that like all the excitement comes from the, a guy doing that and the the, the bingy dingy wink. What, what you're talking about? What what was it? The how do you pronounce it? <laughs> bingy dingy wink. <laughs> Yeah, California, that's, California, bank that that stuff. Um, so it's never really connected with me. And also, I don't know. At some point, you've got mm. to decide if you're singing or rapping. I think. What do you reckon? Can can you can one sing and rap at the same time, or does do you need to divide those yeah, two? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who um, name one just, person sorry, that does good sing rapping? To, a lot of people ask me to shut up. First of all, which is fair enough. I I will. Uh, you you've got a point. I am talking too much. Uh, B Saint fifty three asked, "Who is the guy on the right in the woolly hat?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do another introduction then. Okay, guys, this is my friend Pat Carty, the eminent Irish writer. He writes yeah. for Hot Press, among yeah. other things. I'm sure he'll be doing music books and so on and so forth. He also is a DJ on the. He does a show called the Record Machine. What? Uh, which um, station is that on? It's on Dublin City FM. I broadcast to literally tens of people mm -hmm. every Saturday yeah, at 5 o'clock. But you can find it on... You, if, if you go and follow me on uh, Twitter, all that stuff is there. So Pat underscore Carty, C-A-R-T-Y, if you want. I understand you want me to shut up. Um, but this, is, that's, that's this, cool. is, this is one of my... This is, one, this is the guy that I think is probably the best music writer in the world at the moment. I love the way he has no reverence for any of us. Where is he? Who it's is he? all I know. <laughs> no, 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 come him. on, let me let me uh, let me big you up. I think I think he's um, he's just got it all. It's the stuff makes you laugh. You learn something. And uh, how many books do you read a week? As many as me, I think. Probably nearly. Yeah, at least yeah, at least uh, at least nearly uh, as many. Well, they're all they're all picture books. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a well-read music person who I consider to be an authority on on the matter, and, I, and and I'm glad that you're all here to to experience this this scintillating chat. Um, but we normally do this on Patreon, so the link will be in the description. Yeah. I don't know which yeah. direction that is, but you can come and uh, uh, join in very, regularly. Kind of Justin, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. Same Pat Carter who writes for the Sun says Lee. Uh, not that I know of Lee. You're related to Jack Carty, not that I know of, uh, Seamus. Uh, uh, Lisa says, don't shut up. Okay, you're the boss. Yeah, yeah, keep talking. Mm. Oh, yeah, Kittle, um, the new Muse song. I, I gave it a very cursory listen. I've only got halfway through it so far, but I think it's one of the ones I should talk about in a, in a more detailed way on one of my videos this week. I'll probably do it tomorrow, I think. Um mm. What do you think of Muse in general, Pat? You like them? <laughs> what do I think of Muse? Yeah. Just in general. Let me, let me, let me, what, yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know an awful lot of their music, but what I have heard is um, it's a bit overblown for me. Justin was doing, uh, as, as he does every New Year, on New Year's Eve, was doing his disco set. You know, he, he plays a DJ set. And uh, I had to... I, I was I was looking at it this year, and then I had to drop out. I was on the radio, so I had to drop out for fifteen minutes, and I came back, and um, um, I came back on, and Justin was doing a kind of a, a prog rock set, and I don't like that kind of music. There's not a lot of music I'd say I don't like that, and Muse kind of remind me of that, which is maybe unfair. I've got a mate called Neil who who adores them, thinks they're great. I don't get it myself. It's a bit over the top for me. In, in not in a good queen darkness way, but in a kind of a we went to college and look what I can do kind of way, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I reckon they've got one really fantastic album though. 
Black Coals oh, yeah? Revelations. I love that record. Yeah, it's amazing. I think it came out in 2004 or five or something like that. I just think there's so many great songs on it. Some stuff that I can take or leave, well, but it's really it's ambitious and, and like yeah. it's quite varied. You know, it's like you'd be surprised. I think what's happened since then is they've gone a little bit more. I don't know how to say it. The, the electro side of it's become more prominent in the in the singles. Mm. But I really love that record, and it totally rocks as well. There's some great mm. great stuff and awesome backing vocal arrangements. It does actually sound a bit queenish in places, you know. <coughs> well, you see, look, I haven't heard that record, so it's not fair for me to say they're uniformly crap just the stuff <laughs> i heard i didn't like that might be the greatest record of all time i don't know hmm. muse impression <laughs> knights coming over the hill and the castle and like, <laughs> there, there's a muse impression <laughs> <How about that? laughs> coming over the hill in a castle is it they got like a mobile castle yeah there's all knights and <laughs> there's knights and science fiction with lasers and all like i don't know yeah, Le- there's some laser I think nights. It's like laser nights is pretty cool though. It could be like an eighties um, medieval thing. All right, I'm gonna uh, Jacob re- asks, whipping boy, stunning whipping boy Jacob. Although you know, I've no- nothing against the stunning, but that whipping boy album that was put out again this year, Heartworm, it's one of the greatest things you'll ever hear. Brilliant. Um, there's a super chat one we have to react to, Pat. We've got to do it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, hi Justin. Are there any key signatures that you like to write in? into modulate to or from <laughs> thank you okay well, i'll just tell you one that one that all guitarists love is a key my friend of e because there's one here one here here there's one here and then you can get up there as well on an electric guitar there's just so many options for it and you can you can you can just be you know S- strewing your um, you can strew strew how, what's the strew if you something strewn do you then do you therefore strew 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 it strew it are you are you having a stroke I think I'm having a stroke um, um but I like it because you can go anywhere and you can slide your hand around find yourself anchored and then if you get into trouble you know you can always just do this and then like point it. at people, you know. Nice. I think all guitarists give us the opening like chord e. of. Uh, give us the opening chord of "Love Will Tear Us Apart." There, Justin, a guitar lesson quickly. Aha. Okay. So those of you who are, uh, what's what are they called again? Joy Division enthusiasts, um, and you want to mm-hmm. know the first chord of uh, "Love Will Tear Us Apart" before the real riff starts is this. Um, we're going to be looking for the open That's string good. here on the E. Um, you want to hear an A in there as well, a D, a G, a B, and an E. And essentially, you strike across all of these. First chord. Wow. <sighs> yeah. Uh, more guitar tutorials on, on the Patreon. Links in the description, don't forget. That's very good, yeah. Uh, Joel is asking a question there. <clears throat> Do you like Captain Beefheart? I've tried very hard, Joel, with that stuff. I don't know, does anyone really like Captain Beefheart? Uh, the first album, there's a thing called Woke Up, um, Grown So Ugly. I used to play that in a band I was in. It's a good song. I think I played it the Black Keys version, though, if that's any. That's probably heresy to say that. I tried. I bought that Trout Mask replica and all that. Couldn't get my head around it. Probably my fault. People tell me it's great, you know. Couldn't oh do it. my God, Margot's got a great question. Pat, give us an impression of Justin. Uh, well, I'd have to go to the gym for about six months, first of all. And, uh, you know, Christmas time, all that stuff, you know. Uh, actually, hold on a second. That's pretty good. <clears throat> hold on a second. I will give you an impression of Justin. Uh, I don't know. Is, is, is this guitar going to be all distorted as well? I don't know. No, I think it sounds alright. You got your posh microphone on. How does it sound? What does it sound like? Is that coming through? Yeah, that's nice. Sounds good. Right. Well, the first flush of youth was upon you when our eyes first met, and I knew that to you and to your life I had to get. So you don't even know the lyrics, is it? Near enough. 
I feel lighthearted at the touch of a stranger's hand. An assault my defenses systematically failed to withstand. Cause he came at a time when the pursuit of one true love in which to fall was a be all and end all. Love is only a feeling. When I'm in your arms, I stop believing. Love is only a feeling anyway. Exquisite. That's the definitive version. Um, American in Denmark uh, says, yeah. uh, "Band of horses, band 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 of horses." With lots of question marks. That's um, they did a great version of that too. Did, did you ever hear that? You know that band, band of horses. Uh, of what? Of love is only a feeling. Yeah, they covered it. It's really nice. I've never heard it, no. I know who Band of Horses are, but I've never heard that, no. Yeah, they did it really nice. I did it on, it's only on a sort of um, BBC radio session or something, but it was great. I like that band. Well, that's nice. Is it nice? I mean, yeah. have you had lots of covers? It must be a great um, honour when people do that, is it? We had one song that a lot of people have covered, obviously. I believe in a thing called Love Has Been done yep. Uh, yep. in ragtime, like a reduced sort of folk version of it. I've heard a reggae version, electro... There was somebody on TikTok that was doing something with it, and I believe in a thing called... And then I think they substituted the word love for pussy, which was a little bit disappointing. Um. <laughs> we also believe in. <laughs> but, you know, I, I had to let that one go on account of the quite considerable yeah. artistic merits that, that were... Um, nice. You know. Um, yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's all right. I think what, I believe in Pingle Love is probably like a pub standard. So it's great when you go in the pub and you hear somebody playing that song. It's like. Oh, it must be, yeah. It must know, be. That's a good but thing. I did see a video of you, um, a very, a much younger you with the, the, the train tracks time, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, you were on the, you were on a radio show in Germany, I think, and you were showing people how to play it. And you said, well, lots of bands play this song in pubs, but nobody can do it like me. <laughs> You I didn't feel say that. Face. Come on. I said, but not yeah, all of them that. can do it do it properly. No, you said none of them. And then you said, fuck you. You said, none of them can do it like me. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. That sounds more like me. Yeah, yeah, that does sound a bit like me. Or you, should I say. <laughs> uh, you sound a bit not like Not squeaky me. enough. No, it wasn't meant to be. I can't do Justin's high-pitched voice. My voice is, uh, is a bit lower down the uh, register than that. That's for sure. Um, uh, did I drive people off? Did we drop hundreds of people when I picked no, up no, the guitar? Probably. It's, it's going up. Um, David asks, favourite gig of the last UK tour? Saw you in Glasgow, so obviously it was that one, right? Yeah, Glasgow was special because we have the song Welcome to Glasgow and it was just brilliant to play that to the Glaswegian audience and seeing their little faces jubilantly singing back at us and it just felt amazing. Actually, I nearly cried. I actually nearly cried. I was quite visibly moved by that. It was an amazing experience. Um, pedals. I have one. It's a channel selector on the J, JH3000 Laney amp that I use. Um, normally, I'd have an old, I had an old Mike Hill selector. Just one button, and it would it would go between one amp and another. And the other, they're basically more or less the same sound, but one's just a bit louder for solos and stuff. Um, and that's the only pedal I ever used, but um, that broke, so I have to just use one amp and use the channel selector on it for that tour. I'm thinking about factoring in some other stuff, but um, I would need probably another year or so of, of humming and ahhing before I put anything else in my signal chain. I just like it to be fingers and amps, you know? We all like that, don't we? Well, the, um, I, I just want to, sorry, there was one there that went past me. Johnny Johnson, who had, we answered a question for earlier. He says he's in a band called Blind Dog and they played at a festival that I was the MC at. I do remember you, Johnny, and I thought your band were great because I remember you playing Freddie King because I remember talking to you afterwards because I was going on to the radio then and I was playing a Freddie King song anyway. I remember that. You played Going Down, I think, by Freddie King. It's great. Good band. What do you think of Jack White? <clears throat> 
Jack White has got. We, we uh, love here's Jack, some Jack White, White, White news. We? Here's some Jack White news. Jack White has two albums coming out this year. Wow. Because someone was telling me about it the other day, and it was a song off of the, whatever the first single was, which was all right, which is normal stuff with all the uh, the what's called that pedal effect he uses all the time. Uh, I think he uses like um, uh, some sort of octave pedal, isn't it? Or like it might be a whammy. Yeah, so it was whammy. all that stuff. <clears throat> it was all that stuff and it was just the same as before. But there was a bluegrass version of it released at the same time. That was really good. Mm. So I kind of like Jack White uh, a bit. Yeah. And he, I'll tell you what, he puts his money where his mouth is. Yeah. Because he pours lots of his money into a record label and puts out old records again. So mm -hmm. there you go. That's pretty good, I think. I love Jack White. I think I love his uh, record plant as well. The Third Man stuff that he does. I think he's, I think he's yeah, one of the people that are I mean, actually yeah. uh, one of the defenders of the music trade and the musician. I think he's great. He's a hero. What's your favourite Finn Lizzy song? Uh, Any reasons? Uh, DH92. Uh, just don't remind you. You're getting this for free, mate. You know. So I have to talk a bit. Okay. Yeah. Who's who's having a go at you now? That's all right. It's okay. You're welcome to. It's all right. It's no problem. Who's it's okay. DH2? You can always switch it off, though. You know, these things go off. Oh, yeah. no. DH92. Come on. I'm a typical journalist, and I just talk about myself. Ah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Welcome to the podcast. This is good. Yeah, fair enough. What you do you think me? of uh, Raconteurs? Did you like that? I only know one song. I don't know too well. Um, there was take, Steady As She Goes was the song. No, I that's the one I'm that thinking of. pretty good. Yeah. I think I saw them play somewhere as well, yeah. I, I met him at the... Echo, um, that's the one, yeah. Wait, no, that's the uh, album I was talking yeah, about. Okay. Yeah. Echo. Good, one. good call. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Do you think real music will make a comeback as B Saint 50s? I don't think it ever went away, B Saint 50s. It's, it's there. You might have to look a bit harder for it maybe sometimes, but it's there. You know? Jack White or Jack Black? Which is the Battle of the Jacks? Hmm. I mean, Jack White can't do the things that Jack Black does, and vice versa, I think. Jack Black, in um, you'd like uh, the Jumanji reboot thing where he's like, um, he's... I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's an amazing bit of acting, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. good. He, he seems so feminine in it. I love it. He's a talented guy. I mean, I had a... Just, just to DH92, that you like this. Uh, I wrote a review of a um, what do you call that band he had? Uh, uh, Jack Bla uh, Tenacious D. Tenacious G, and and it was one of the worst records I've ever heard in my life. And the review was actually I don't know if the review was printed. I think it was rejected because I was a bit too mean. I probably I probably spent the whole review talking about myself. DH72 or whatever your name is, probably. Amanda's writing in to defend you. Says we love you, Pat. <clears throat> That's all right. Thanks. Thanks. It's okay. It's fine. Every opinion is welcome. Rhiannon agrees. Jack Black and Jumanji is amazing. <laughs> Why are we talking about Jack Black and Jumanji? <laughs> 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 but it's true. He was amazing in that. And basically, mm. there's about there's a there's a period of time when he was in about ten films in a row that were all just brilliant, and he, all because of him. School of Rock is great. School of Rock is great. Yeah, when he that. had like, um, he had a That's little run that was a bit like Jim Carrey's run in the 90s, I think. He was great. Mm. But everybody has it and then they lose it. That's just simple. Mm. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely true. You know. uh, sorry, we're trying to catch as many of these questions as we can. If we're missing you, uh, I'll throw it up again, you know. Okay, look at this one. If John Frusciante leaves you cold regarding feel, how about Jimmy Page? <coughs> What about Jimmy Page? Is that what he said? Yeah. Uh, I, I, Jimmy Page well, has got loads of feel. He's got loads of, he's a, Jimmy Page is a really distinctive player, isn't he? He's a bit sloppy when you see him play live now. Yeah, he's economic. When they had the reunion he's, thing, I thought he was all over the place. You know, I kind of really love that, was, though. I thought. And the longer it went on, the worse it got. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's great, yeah. I mean, talking about Jack White and, and Jimmy Page and, and The Edge was mentioned earlier. If you, if you see that movie... It might get it might get loud. It might get loud. That's, that's fantastic. That's, yeah. yeah, that's really enjoyable to see the three of them working together. Mm -hmm. That's really good. What do you think of the progression? Uh, of Prince a band is an like amazing guitarist. Yeah, Tony Delta Blues. He's amazing. I love Prince. I absolutely adore him. You know, I was lucky enough to get to see him a couple of times. He was brilliant. Have you seen Orange County? I've never seen that. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know. Who said? Who asked that? Remind me. I well, uh, have, Pete, I don't know. Pete, Pete Dencart is saying that Jack Black is in, in the film. In the film Orange County is a classic. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, HK, I'd agree with you. Jimmy Page is fantastic and wrote a turn and stuff. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Kietil's asking a brilliant question. Justin, the Darkness's music was in School of Rock. What's the story behind that? Um, okay. Was it? It was, yeah. There's a scene when um, they get in a van and they have to drive somewhere. I think when they leave, that they're, they're listening to... Um, it might be the same scene where they're listening to uh, Immigrant Song. And then when they pull up in the car park, they're playing Black Shuck. And all the kids get out of the van, because, I think. Because was it, was it the case that uh, they, they played their 20 seconds of uh, Immigrant Song and <laughs> ran out of money and said, we better get something else? I think mean, that's it. <laughs> that I mean, we need something with a high-pitched voice like and it. a bit of a riff on it. Anyone got anything? Was it? We've got a budget of £45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's good who's cheap and uh, adequate uh, the darkness are right. yeah that'll do yeah. <laughs> I said adequate oh yeah that's fine um uh slick 2160 mm. thanks for the uh two bucks that's really kind of you nice to nice to see you yeah very kind of you mm. and there was someone there who gave a few quid just to say hello from lower stuff sorry I didn't get the that's name brilliant. but uh yeah. hello back it's lovely isn't it absolutely um yeah. Jimmy Kipp says, uh, loving your channel, good sir. When are you going to challenge Rick Beato to a music analysis battle? <laughs> How does that work then? Is it the battle of the... Uh, an, anil, an, anil, anil, battle analysis? Analysis. Uh, hmm. How can hmm. one... What, how do you win something like that? I, I should say that Justin's uh, channel, you know, when he does all these... Because I call him after every one of them <laughs> and accuse him. I think I've accused you of being full of shit every time. A couple of times. No, yeah. Well, once or twice. Yeah, yeah. Once or twice. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. It's very good. As I'm sure you all know. And I think it really shows a side of Justin that we haven't seen before, the, the really intelligent side. You know, that he, he tends to hide under a bushel, you know. Yeah, we usually just talk about farts. And, it, and his musical knowledge is, is his musical knowledge of technical side of music is very impressive, I think. Right, guys. Fans of Costello or not, Bouncing Hearts says, yeah, huge fan. I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago, Bouncing Hearts, and he was great, but I couldn't get... If you think I'm talking a lot now, I had half an hour with Elvis Costello, and I, I don't think I opened my mouth more than five times. He just kept going and going. He was great. Why does Pat sit in the kitchen? Because it's my kitchen. It's in my apartment. Where where else would I be sitting, Tobias? Yeah, this is it. We, we've no, but you have. We've seen you in your living room on the Patreon, haven't we? <coughs> That's, um, true. That's true. I, I'm yeah. looking forward because to a balcony one. Government. That'd be good. When I do it from the bed. Oh yeah, we've never seen your bedroom mm. where the magic happens. No, <laughs> no very few people have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> I heard someone well, shout out, is that a Strat, when you got the Stratocaster out in Leeds. <laughs> yep. I didn't hear that. Good. That's great, though. Is Radio, is radio Actually, dead? What's the best station in the UK or online? Um, radio, <coughs> I don't know. Used to, radio don't used to so. be the most important thing in America. Uh, the press used to be the most important mm. thing in, in Britain. Um, and every sort of mm. territory as you go through them has like a, an area of, the, of media that is considered the, the one that breaks the most bands. And I don't know, radio is always part of it. I mean, you, every record company, every record company in the world has a dedicated radio plugger. Who's just going to try and get stuff on playlists. It's really important. I don't think it's dead. Do you think it's, I, I can't be dead. I mean, it, you hear a lot of stuff where it's people, where it's like, um, you know, DJ disc jockeys that are saying things like snazzy and describing their, their sort of Christmas jumper as yeah, snazzy. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, but there was always that. Hold on a second. Yeah. That was always there. You know, that was there in the 80s. That was there in the 70s. Okay. Daytime radio can be a bit uh, challenging sometimes, depending on your taste, I suppose. Mm. But there are st the late night radio in Ireland is pretty good. Um, the station I work for, because it's not, um, it's a community radio station, you know, so it's only Dublin and surrounding areas. But it's not really, it's not a commercial station. So each DJ plays whatever the hell they want. So there's two hours of, you'd have two hours of soul music or two hours of reggae music 
or or whatever it might be. And uh, but you know, commercial stations like the big stations are under pressure to to do. You had a great thing about um, the sound of a record being the same as the sound of the advertisement. Yeah. You were talking about Coldplay again. Yeah, I think I and, was. And I was talking about. Played. Actually, I should point out. I should point out, talking about radio, I'm actually on a radio station. I'm actually on <laughs> News Don't Talk send now. them away. Not um, now. Not now. I'm not, don't go away. Right? <laughs> I'm just Listen doing, back I'm to it later. For, I'm on that for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just if you're, if you're bored. If you're, if you're not, I'll tell you what. What's that fella named 72 or whatever it is? If you're not getting enough Pat Carty with mm. this, you can also put on the radio and mm -hmm. listen to me as well if you want. Yeah. Those are your choices with you talking in yeah. between them. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Um, but uh, I, does it, um, yeah, I, like someone Danny is saying here, yeah, same for us, Common FM and Athlone Community Radio, yeah, and those stations are great, I think, because if you get someone on, I'm not talking about me now, but if you get someone a DJ that you like, because when I was growing up, there was uh, Dave Fanning that people will know, and he played two hours every night, and he just played what he wanted to play, and if you liked what he was playing, it was great, and it was, and he'd introduce you to new music. This is before the internet, so it was very important that time when we were growing up, you know that you'd hear stuff that you wouldn't hear elsewhere, mm. I think. What do you think? Well, I think the BBC's pretty good because you've got, like, um, I like, I like Radio 4. When I'm Six. driving around in England, I just like listening to the documentaries that they make. And, and there's a good one, there's mm. a good station here, I think it's, like, RT something or other, and you just hear, like, you might just hear, like, Albanian accordion music for two hours. <laughs> it's, like, it's so dedicated, right. like, the programming is, is really... Um, you know, varied, and you just hear two hours of, of real deep dives in, in genres that you're never going to bother listening to otherwise. I think that's quite important, really. Yeah. But, you know, anything with a playlist that's determined by somebody who wants to appease um, advertise, advertisers who provide all the revenue. But they have to. Yeah, they do. They I mean, it's, to, it's yeah. just, you know, making ends meet and stuff, but it isn't good for music, and it's yeah. not much fun to listen to, I think. Yeah. It doesn't mean There's it's one, um, Darren, Darren, Con is it Darren Conlon? Sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. Said Spotify is better than radio because it's all the music you like. You see, you might have a point there, Darren, but I think what happens there, you know what the, the algorithm that, uh, that um, if you like this, you should try this, you know, that, that predicts what you might like. Mm -hmm. It keeps you very much within your own taste. You know, because it says, if you liked this, you like, you know, if you like this song, you like this. But it never says, if you like this, try this song that's completely different. You know, so it kind of keeps you maybe straight jacketed a bit. That would be my mm. thoughts about it, maybe. You know? Yeah, if it keeps feeding uh, not you that stuff not, that you, you know, already know, like, you're never going to expand. Spotify is great. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You never, you're kind of kept in your own corral, if you know what I mean. And you're mm. not, totally. you don't get to get out other places, maybe, you know. Um, that's my that's my two. No, I totally agree with that. I think this I think it's important. Um, how about this? Like, <laughs> I wonder if you've ever heard. Oh. Like, Gian Pires says, uh, or Gian Pires. So, Justin, would you consider reacting to one of the latest Cradle of Filth songs? Of course, I would. Of course, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I I would love nothing more. <laughs> what do you think? Have you ever heard a Cradle of Filth song before? First no, of all, I let's love the name. Yeah, the uh, name's amazing. I, That's fucking brilliant. I, I couldn't tell you what they sound like. It sounds like a real yeah. metal band in, in terms of the name, you know. If it's, not, if it's not, I'll be furious. What was the one what was the one you tried to get me to listen to? Hammer oh. Smash Face. Oh yeah, Cannibal Corpse, yeah. Cannibal Corpse. It's great stuff. <laughs> what? I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I like is obituary. Is any any obituary fans in the in the chat today? Yeah. Throw your hands in the air if you're an obituary fan. There, give me a, give me a thumbs up if you're into yeah. obituary. Cause of death, of course, is is the similarly themed album album title, and there's a song on there called Chopped in Half, which I really love. You know, that's uh, Chopped in Half. I mean, think goes Chopped in Half. See the blood spill from your mouth. It's just great. <laughs> I, I, I'm writing it down. Chopped it by Chopped in Half. Uh, no, it's it's Chopped just in Half by Obituary. That's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm bit sure. So I just get their great. Yeah, you'll, you'll find it. Yeah, just go for the great yeah. hits. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. uh, right. Chopped in half. Yeah, there you go. Joseph Warner is uh, backing you up there. He says, giving you three thumbs up. Thumbs up, even. For, yeah. uh, <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. Chopped in half. 
Nice. Uh, B St. Joss, what's my radio channel? It's Dublin City FM, B St. Thanks for asking. Follow me on Twitter and get all the updates for all that crap. Um, mm. But the most important thing is to follow the links in the description to join the Patreon where we oh, have, yeah, yeah, have yeah, a discussion sorry. like this, which is unfiltered and unsullied by things like, um, mm. you know, political correctness. For a start, That's we don't do that yeah. over there. Um, things that may no. be considered <coughs> litigious, like remarks that might n- encourage a, a lawyer's phone call or something like that. We do those yeah. on Patreon. We can't really Funny do Funny accents. Here, yeah. Always amusing. Yeah. Just hilarious accents. Yeah, always yeah, yeah. Stories about her. Uh, exactly. Anna's quite right. Uh, I mentioned stories. I mentioned those uh, bands in Heavy Metal Lover, the the darkness song from Easter is cancelled. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's very nice use use of the word uh, pulchritudinous. Gee, I can't even pronounce it. Pulchritudinous, uh, Nick. That's a very nice use of that word. Fair play to you. Have you ever been to Dungarvan, Pat? Where the where the old oak is? Of course. Uh, how thick is your pick uh, you did say pick did you how thick is your pick <laughs> Camila Sullivan yeah sure sure I know who Camila Sullivan is yeah I saw her do a um, she was part of a show that was doing uh, uh, Kurt Vile and Brecht stuff it was a very interesting show wouldn't be stuff now the milkman would be whistling when he's walking down the lane or anything like that but it was good <laughs> yeah um, here's a what this seems is, to be a facetious... Thing play here. Gotta... What you got there? Sorry. It's just binging, the, the, it's just ah. dinging away the followers that are building up. This is working very well for Amazing. me. Amazing. Yeah, it's good. Um, I should, we should point out, because we haven't mentioned it in a few, a few minutes, that this is a taster for what goes on exactly. behind the so, patio mall every Sunday. Now, it's, it's, actually, it's actually more relaxed normally than this because we're trying to answer so many questions. Normally we go, if you think there's bullshitting in this, it can go on for hours mm. about robot sharks and all sorts of stuff every Sunday at 9 o'clock. So the link is somewhere. I don't know where it is. but uh, It's in the description, I think. Sort of, if there is it's worth checking thing, out. I don't know. Um, so keep, keep coming with the questions. It's half ten already. All right, keep thoughts on the Pogues. Great, Seamus. Yeah, absolutely. Hell's Ditches. Sorry, Hell's Ditches. The album I love. I think it's brilliant. The Hungover one. I think that's great. Um, Post human. I can remember seeing ask. them. In, oh, yeah. sorry, mate. Go on. No, no. Go ahead. No, my. I'm um, sorry. No, you, it's all right. Go. Sorry. The Pogues. We just about to talk about the Pogues. Well, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's good. Go for it. I'll just do well, this for S- France. Segovia is pointing out that the old oak is, is not in Dungarvan. Uh, it's in the song, the old Dungarvan oak. Uh, the pub you're talking about is in Cork City, but there's one in Dublin as well. You're going to sound like Terry Wogan when you're older, says Rich. Yeah, I probably do now. <laughs> ah, Mrs. Wogan. <laughs> the current Mrs. Wogan, huh? Ah. Yes. That's brilliant. Jimmy Young is on just after the news. Yeah. Nice. Um, Post Human is okay, asking a, a question. question. Here we go. Can you talk about your involvement yeah. with Meatloaf, ahead, yeah. Foxy Shazam, and or Adam Lambert? Um, all of those things came about because I was working with um, Rob Cavallo uh, on a. Uh, first of all, I went to Rob Cavallo's to do to take part in a Meatloaf writing camp, and I was sort of trying to contribute songs for um, the album that's called um, Hang Cool Teddy Bear. <laughs> Um, at the same time, they were making the Adam Lambert record and they were looking for songs. So he ended up taking one of my songs and I ended up playing on it with uh, Tim Pierce, the legendary guitar player. Actually, Tim Pierce played on a lot of the Meatloaf stuff as well. Um, and then we did Foxy Shazam as well. All of that was Rob Cavallo. I think, I think nearly all of it was Tim Pierce as well. I, I think he lent me all, all his really expensive sort of like 1959 Les Paul and <coughs> cool amps and stuff like that to, to play on the Foxy thing. Um, and it really, it was just some session work and writing. But I met I met Eric uh, Eric Nally from Foxy Shazam on the Meatloaf thing, and we've been friends ever since. And obviously, the rest is history. Thanks, Post Human. Cheers. Uh, there's two two people there. Brian, sorry, I didn't get your second name. Brian was asking why do, why do I write about music when I hate it so much? Oh, that's not true, Brian. There's some stuff I don't like, but I'm very passionate about the stuff I do like. Yeah, that's but the I, thing. But I take your point. Uh, maybe, maybe if you're just listening to me tonight, it sounds like I hate everything. I don't. Um, no, I think it's and, because and, I've uh, been trying to, I'm trying to egg you on. That's why I'm, tr- I'm always trying to ask you about stuff that gets that sort of uh, yeah. reaction because I like it. Sorry. Waitley starts talking about the Eagles. Uh, Pratosaurus Rex <laughs> asks, uh, 
what, what do you think would be the changes in the way people consume music in the future? Is streaming here to stay? What do you think, Justin? Yeah, I think streaming's here to stay for another... How, how, how often does it change? What, what's the, I suppose, MP3s and downloading stuff and torrents and all that stuff, what was that, about 20 years ago? Now it's definitely streaming. So every 15, start, yeah, every 15 years, it's something new, isn't it? Remember mini disc players? When was that? Late 90s, early know. noughties? Yeah. yeah. There's got to be a format for people who I actually care about music, though, because I think MP3s are so squished and streaming stuff is so compressed that there's no nuance in the mixes. Yeah. And like everything that gets re, you know, it gets re. Um, mastered for for the purposes of listening on your phone it, and you lose a lot of detail mm. and, and like human beings with ears are going to need more from their music eventually and i think um i think that there'll be either either streaming that's really really high quality somehow or, or a more efficient way of compressing it without having to sort of sacrifice sound quality or there'll be some kind of resurgence of the the proper audio files you know people who with massive headphones like this who sit in leather chairs mm. smoke a pipe or a, a vape yeah. pipe that's in the shape of a normal pipe and listen to something where you can mm. really hear the, the playing and the detail but you know yeah. that would lead to like um better recording studios and just better everything it's a long way off and maybe i'm will, an will idealist but i think it will happen Will they stick to thing? Will it come to the point where um, that you'll have a, a an interface built into the back of your head, where you just stick in a um, you can stick in a chip and have the whole recorded music put into your head anyway? But then you have that anyway. Would it be you, like you a hear it all in your head anyway? Would it be bone conduction though? If it was a chip, would it be in your ear or, or in the cochlea or so, or around the back? <laughs> cochlea. Yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very good. Uh, the uh, Cockney Rebel double points. Uh, the um, <laughs> double points. The, uh, yeah, I mean that's that's an interesting thing. I I I remember watching a sci-fi film when I was young, and a fellow was in his house or something, and he came in. And he said, uh, he he just said, uh, play some John Lee Hooker, right? And John Lee Hooker came on, and I thought, oh my god, that'd be amazing. But we have that now. Which is weird, mm. you know. You can do that now. Yeah. So it's got, It's it's a, uh, your argument, I suppose, is between convenience and quality. It, and when the two of them come together, like they're trying all that streaming lossless files and all that now, mm. and it, it does sound better, I suppose. But, but it's uh, going to. It, it, it will kill a, a certain. Pain in the arse. You know, if if they find a way of of um, yeah, vinyl is a pain in the ass. It's too heavy, but it is. Uh, it's an investment, and it's kind of like um. Well, it does sound a ceremony it to, does, I mean, to playing a lot of, it. It does sound great, but it is a pain yeah. in the ass. Like, I'll tell you what, right? They gave me the other day, um, the record company gave me the new Bowie thing, Toy. It's called Toy. It's a box. And the vinyl comes as six 10-inch discs. So you basically put it on, go and sit down, and then you have to get up again and turn the thing over, you know? That's awkward, you know? Mm. If, if you're a lazy bastard like me, that's awkward. Mm. Sounds great. Good album. Mm. Um, I don't know. What were we talking about? I don't know. Ask me another question. No, I was just, just going to oh, say, Bridget, like... Um, sorry, Bridget... Bridget asked, Bridget asked a question that she and she she put her money where her mouth is. She says, "What's her opinion about Iron Maiden?" Ooh, all right. Well, yeah. musical opinion <clears throat> or what? What's what we after? I love the work well, of uh, yeah. what's his name again? The um, who's the guy who does the artwork again? I've forgotten his name. God, he invented Eddie, Eddie. and he does all the <laughs> his names. I don't think his name's Eddie. Eddie Kidd, I think it's Eddie Kidd, is it? Eddie Kidd, the yeah, he was a stunt motorcyclist, but also um, an excellent artist, uh, yeah. illustrator par excellence. Uh, when he's not doing wheelies, he's um, just drawing people doing wheelies and, and and little demons hidden in bushes. When he's not in action, <laughs> when he's not in action, he's in traction. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they used to say about Eddie Kidd? <laughs> I think that's a. Uh, Apollo Creed? No, it wasn't Apollo Creed. It was the other guy. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, Apollo Eddie Creed, the Eagle. first man on the moon. Eddie the Eagle, probably. Um, mm. uh, Derek Riggs. Someone that people are saying here. No, is that it's his not. Name? Derek I'm not, Riggs. I'm not talking about him. The one who does actually the one who does the um, Marillion. What's his name? I've forgotten his name. Fish. I don't know. Mark Wilkinson. I knew it was Mark Wilkinson. Okay, so Mark Wilkinson. Mm. Um, he's done a lot of Iron Maiden stuff, and I think it's iconic. I remember my friend Juggy, Justin Pierce. Is he? 
Uh, and he, he used to wear Iron Maiden t-shirts all the time. It was one of his sort of um, go-to... <coughs> I mean, there's so many different designs you could have. He could wear a different Iron Maiden t-shirt every day, and he just wouldn't... So, I mean, in terms of fashion variety, all mm. for it. Um, Music-wise, never heard it, so I wouldn't know. What? I've never heard it. I've never listened to it. Just don't care. Never listened to Iron Maiden. <laughs> I've never listened to it. I know that one that goes, um, what's the one that goes, um, run to the hills, run for your Great life. Song. That's amazing, yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Mm. Um, uh, D- Delius, Delius uh, Mitt, which is a great name, points out that Eddie Kidd, Eddie Kidd, Eddie Kidd is now paralyzed. If that's the case, what? obviously I didn't know that, Delius. Oh, so no offense meant to fans of Eddie or his family or anything like that. Um, um, I, I tell I, you, that run to the hills. I run to the hills. I suggested that when I was getting married, I suggested that as the first song <laughs> to my then wife. She, did, she didn't really get the joke. Brilliant. She didn't like the joke. Anyway. The Simon's uh, shown me the error of my ways, the torture device. What I should have said is, ask me again what I think of Iron Maiden. What do you think of Iron Maiden? All right, Just but personally, I prefer the pair of anguish. <laughs> mm. Sorry. Some medieval torture device uh, humor there. Well done. <laughs> ACDC, yeah, well, ACDC, yeah, of course. Any thoughts on the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band? Absolutely love. I love Vivian Stanshall. I think all of his contributions to music and, and in fact, film as well. I just think he's amazing. Have you ever watched that? The, I saw the, him um, in, uh, the Sir Henry Rawlins at, at Rawlinson's End. Yes, yeah. Incredible. I saw him in, he was in Magical Mystery Tour, which I saw over Christmas, yeah. He was in that as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. That guy's a genius. Mm. Probably didn't sell many records. That's where uh, there, here's a here's a uh, here's a pop uh, trivia nugget for you. The song they play in um, Magical Mystery Tour is called "Death Cab for Cutie," which gave that band their name. Aha. Uh-huh. Who I know nothing about either. But there you go. I, I know. I hear some "Death Cab for Cutie" facts <laughs> off the top of my head. Okay. They were signed right. to Atlantic. I'll I tell you what, Justin. Before you start, before you start, mm. I'm going to go to the little boys' room. You Please. regaled them all with Indeed. the facts okay. about that. Okay? I'll see, I'll now, see how many. Uh, sorry, if, if Mr. 72 is, is there, this will be your moment to shine because I'll be gone for a few minutes. Come on, 72. Right. Def Cab for Cutie signed to Atlantic yeah. Records in 2000 and something. That's all I know. Right. Can you remember bands like Saxon? Sort of. Uh, is, it, is it Biff, that guy? What's his name again? Can't remember. He was cool. Um, give me some... Ah, uh, oh, yes. Brian Adams, question mark. The answer is an emphatic yes all the way. Incredible songwriter. I love his voice as well. Come on, give me some questions, guys. Wasp. Is Wasp Wasp cool? Yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't know, actually. Do I still have that striper shirt? Thanks, Todd. I actually had two striper shirts. Um, but, you know, they were very similar. I will admit that. I just like the yellow and black vibes. And uh, I th- at one point, um, I think Ginger, Ginger from the Wild Hearts, sorry, dropping a name there, said um, that the singer from Striper had asked if I actually like Striper or if I just like the T-shirt. And I lied and I said I actually like Striper. To my shame. Jeff Stryker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, a Colonel Striker from the Mar- Marvel movies, who, um, not the one you, you know, you, you must remember the Jeff Stryker cock and ball set, no? <laughs> uh, yeah, it comes free with, um, oh, sorry, that's, it comes free, oh, I can't do it, sorry. It comes free. It comes free. <laughs> <laughs> Nature calling for Pat, yeah, that's right, uh, SC role ninja. I'm an old man, you know, so I have to. Go and use the facilities now and again, you know. What do you uh, think of Axel Rose of ACDC? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Can I give you my hot take? Go ahead, yeah. Fucking awesome. His voice is ideal for that stuff. Sounds amazing. He must have had an auto cue because he remembered all the words and everything, but it sounded amazing. Perfect. Fair enough. That I might, didn't see them. That so might be I controversial. Know. I just thought it was great. Mm. didn't see them sorry someone said we didn't answer their uh, super chat question sorry about that what where when just what? didn't see it where was it uh, I don't know you know 
I'll try and get your name there, and we'll 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 have a look for it. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, HK. We can find HK's question there. We'll we'll have a go at it. Sorry, I didn't see it. Oh, um, Gustavo uh, Munoz asks: uh, Any plans for a one-way ticket to Helen back vinyl reissue? No. Um, <laughs> 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 no plans as yet. It probably won't be worthwhile until 2025, which is you know 20 years after it came out. Um, seen a couple of people asking about Maiden. I too would be interested in both y'all's opinion in this in inarguable juggernaut. But do you think they've still got it? Up the effing irons. Obituary is wholesome. <laughs> nice one, Bridget. Um, yeah, we just talked about Iron Maiden a little bit. He wasn't uh, uh, Bruce Dickinson being caught in camera talking about Brexit. That was I thought that was pretty funny. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I mean, you can look that up and, and, and see it. There was one question there from uh, Joel Morris asking about, did I know or do we know that Brian Adams wants to be a film director? Well, uh, Joel, as far as I know, he's a very accomplished photographer. So it's the next logical step, I suppose. Uh, we love Brian Adams, by the way, uh, on this this thing. I, I, I reviewed him a couple of years ago, and he was great. And he got in touch with He sent me a message afterwards to say thanks, so... Nice guy all round. Um, Bert Turbo is asking about where I ha where I got my white T-shirt with all the eyeballs and stuff on it. Um, there's mm -hmm. if you go back to that video, there'll be a link to um, the the website w which sells those T-shirts um, called uh, I think it's called planplan.ch or something. You'll find it there. So thanks a lot for that. Go and go searching. Uh, we've, we'll amend the description to include a link. Cheers. Uh, Stevie Mac asks, uh, are you too no dad rock? Absolutely, uh, Stevie. But dad rock is um, dad rock is, is great. We're both dads, so mm -hmm. we'd be advocates of dad rock. Mm. Because everything I listen by by because I'm a dad, by my the very nature of my situation, everything I listen to is dad rock if you if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Or dad jazz. Do you ever listen to dad? Every folk? time I rock it's Yeah. I do listen to dad jazz, yeah, sometimes, yeah. I don't know enough about it to be talking about it, but some stuff I like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Check this one out. Do you have a cousin called Bo? <laughs> Do you have a cousin called Bo? Me? Yeah. Don't think so. Bo Carty. It's a great name. That, that would be awesome. It's a great name. Was he in a film with uh, uh, Burt Reynolds a few times? Driving a truck? Bo Carty is the hound dog or whatever. The, uh, That's a great name. I'm going to change my name. I'm going to change my name to Bo Carty. But is it Bo and Luke Duke from the Dukes of Hazard, isn't it? Maybe that's what you're thinking, because we're sort of, Maybe. you know... Handsome. Sometimes the, the letter of the law just is, isn't enough, you know. <laughs> We've been in, well, we have been in trouble with them since the day we were born. <laughs> so, it's been yeah. all you've ever saw, been in trouble with the law since the day we were born, yeah. Making our way the only way we know how. Just a couple of good old boys. You know, uh, Dad Prog. No, that that doesn't. Oh, Dad Prog. K, K, that is K, one K, of the worst. Kids. One of the worst genres. If Sorry, there should ever be a genre that. that's uh, eliminated, it's Dad Prog. Yeah, I can't go with that at all. See, it's settling down now. You know, it's uh, we've settled down to our uh, median number of seven mm -hmm. two eight, yeah, and so it. things are settling down now. And this is where you get the uh, the uh, Justin and Pat show after hours. Yeah, I think. You know. I must check with our uh, production staff and see if we've both been fired yet. No, not so far. Oh, um, uh, Abe versus Game says that the, 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 the <laughs> distant cousin <laughs> might very be good Joe. Paul. <laughs> What's that saying? Paul said, uh, I don't know, he was in, in quotations, I don't know enough to talk about it. Never stopped you before, Pat. That's a good point, Paul. <laughs> uh, excellent point. Any relation to Grange Hills, Todd Carty? No, Lloyd, not as far as I know. Uh, although, yeah, the spelling of our second names is unusual. Normally there's a H in the middle of it or something, but not the way we spell it. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, see, I don't like yes. Uh, Firelanderino. Bocarty and Coke. Well, there you go, Justin. There's a question for you. Go on. From Matt. Are you a fan of modern virtuosos like uh, uh, Petrucci, Vi, uh, Basie, etc. I'm probably pronouncing. Yeah, I don't. Right. I don't know a lot of the, all of those guys. I used to love Steve Vai. Actually, I remember I bought one of his solo records when I was about 15, 16. Um, Petrucci, I'm quite new to the 
mm. late, quite late to the party on his stuff, but I think he's really expressive and technical. Um, and it's pretty amazing what they can do. You know, I don't know if it, if I can't imagine if you'll permit me guessing this, Pat. I can't imagine you getting much out of listening to those guys. But if you're a guitar player and you want to hear something that makes you just want to give up, then Petrucci is good because uh, he can he can make you feel stuff, but also just blow you away with his technique. It's, it's kind of it's a bit scary what he can do actually. Um, Jacob What's Collier. What's the man's name? Um, oh, he's great. I love Jacob Collier. Your Wengi Malmsteen. Your Wengi Malmsteen. Ingvi, Ingvi. Ingvi. Yeah, these guys are. These yeah, guys are. He is. He is a. Tr- yeah, but he is so bad. It's just so funny because it's you see videos of him and he just go, "Oh my god, that's atrocious." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's going, blah, 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 and uh, here's a bit of back for you and all this, and you go, "Fuck off, will you?" <laughs> Fuck's sake, write a song. You know, play, play, yeah. just play three chords. Yeah. You know, do it properly. Yeah. Todd but says... You uh, based on your chin, yeah. No. And that <laughs> is an arse, by the way, for people who ask. That was a present from our Patreon friends at Christmas. It is a, fl- it is a flower pot shaped like an arse. Just to answer your question. So it is an arse, yeah. <laughs> um, Favourite Kajagoogoo song? That's a tough too one, shy. It? It's got to be too shy. Yeah, it's got to be too shy. Hush, hush, hide away. Do you know do you know Jacob Collier? Do you know who that is? Collier? No. Nope, don't think so. Um this is a guy who looks like he's about I don't know, looks like he's twenty, he's probably much older than that. But he's got perfect pitch and he does like um really interesting like um backing vocal arrangements. I've seen him singing with Coldplay, which should have put me off, but I actually thought, hang on a second, who's this guy? And then we started doing a little bit of a right. rabbit hole on him. Uh, that's that's not a sex thing, by the way, guys. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, I re- <laughs> I'm really, really. It's the way I do it. It's really, <laughs> it's really impressive. Like uh, that's that's a guy who really understands um, music theory and and like what when he looks at a chord. Like me and Pat, we look at a chord and it says like um, diminished, suspended, nine, seven. It it leads yeah. to us saying things like, what the fuck? And then we ad- we advised each other to just play the first letter that you see. So if it's like a C, add nine, diminished, whatever, just play a C. Just play a C. You'll be all right. Yeah, that's what they mean. <laughs> that's what that's they what mean. They mean. Um, uh, no, but, I mean, but Matthew, Jacob Collier Matthew really understands sorry, it. Man. Go on. Yeah, you go. You go. Matthew says their uh, talent is atrocious. And uh, Matthew, uh, uh, he's a talent is atrocious question mark. Now, Matthew, I presume you're referring to what I said about uh, Ingwe or whatever you pronounce his name. That's why music is so great. You can like your stuff and I can like my stuff and it's all right. It's just an opinion. It's, you know, it's nothing personal. Um, uh, Darth Gibson threw us a few quid just to say thanks for uh, uh, permission to land. Fair play to you, Darth. Uh, Who's that kid? Says uh, Pat. Two super underrated Irish songwriters, Dave Kaus and Cahal Cockton. Familiar with them? I am. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I don't, Fatima I haven't Mentions. Met I've met Dave before. Yeah. I remember Fatima Mentions. That's that's a name I haven't heard for yeah. a long time. Like, uh, what was that? Like Chow- Chowchescu yeah. was a Fatima Mentions one, wasn't it? Was that? Yeah, wow. it's a great song. Blues for Chowchescu. Chowchescu yeah, mm. great song. Really cool. Uh, there were good Pat, why do you hate prog rock so much? There were good bands in the seventies, eighties. I think music reached its peak in the seventies, Astrid. I just don't like prog. Mm. And again, anything mm. I've heard, maybe there's a prog record out there that I'm gonna to hear tomorrow that's gonna to be the greatest thing ever. I don't know. I think if you include um Cardiacs in the in the prog umbrella, <clears throat> a little man in a house in the mm. whole world window might do it for you. Do you think? Yeah, or um oh what's the the Opeth one? I think you'd like Heritage, the Opeth album, at first. I think you'd be impressed yeah. with it, at least. I think you'd be impressed with it. I think our, our plant there has just signed up so many podcasts to enjoy. I presume that's Robert Plant. Yeah. Nice to welcome you on board, Robert. Uh, Pat looks like he enjoys Kajigugu. I might, Brian. What's this, what about it? Do a kitchen tour. Uh, there's the window and the fridge, and there's the door into the living room. <laughs> the end. Jellyfish, underrated band. Absolutely twisted illusion. They're a brilliant yeah. band. Two great albums. You know, two fantastic records. Actually, I heard some Jellyfish today. Strange enough I that love you mentioned. Jellyfish. It. I yeah. think I was in a Jellyfish Join video when I was like 15. I think. I was in a Jellyfish really? video. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I can't remember which one it was now, but they actually filmed it at the waterfront in Norwich. 
and I was at the gig. So, you know, ended up in a jellyfish video. There you go. Yeah. We need m some more surreal questions. The music questions are great, but they don't really send us off into a tangent as maybe some strange ones. And uh, I'd like to say hello to our regular patrons as well who are here, but probably have abandoned us for, uh, what do you call the audio on, on my iPad? Uh, you're talking about Discord. Discord, they probably all run off to that. Yeah. We'll go on there after this. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah. This is Jason kind Fox of breathless, well, isn't yeah, it? When there's absolutely. so many comments flying past, you just got, you haven't got a chance to yeah. think. Any thoughts about Bjork? I, I love her anyway, yeah, Rod, yeah? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Tool? There you go, Justin. I have no thoughts on Tool because I don't know anything about them at all. Okay. Justin, away you go. What do I think of Tool? Um, I, need to, I need to listen to it a bit more. It's sort of meditative in the way it's sort of cyclical and everything goes... I, I, I always thought this voice is less powerful than I expect it to be when I hear it on record, but I'm told that they're amazing live. I haven't seen them yet. I, I had intended to go and see them on the next tour, but I don't know whether that's, uh, I don't know when that's going to be, actually. They usually, they usually tour every 10 years, and then they inspire like, people to just leg it and buy as many tickets as they can because it's kind of like it's such an event. Um, what I will say is that mm. there are a lot of tool, in, tool enthusiasts who are absolutely intolerable. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, tour is a religious experience. Like, fuck off. It's a gig, you know. It's not a religious experience. Um, and, I, and I feel I, like some of the... Like the, the, the yeah, yeah. Go on, you, you should take on the tool thing. This is good. I, I just think... I don't know their music at all, right? I, I, I don't think it's my cup of tea, but there's a certain kind of... And I might be, uh, you know, generalizing here, but I see people who are tool fans with a tool t-shirt or something like that, and it's the baggy pants with the... The, the, the legs are too long and it's frayed and it's all wet. <laughs> They've got multiple piercings. They've got their wallet on a chain, that kind of thing. They've got a funny looking haircut. You know, mm. should that put me off a band? I know it shouldn't. No, it, it shouldn't. You're does. right. It shouldn't. Um, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. I'm right. Yeah, I don't know. I just think there's a lot of sort of. Uh, Tool's one of those bands that has like an evangelical following and it always, they're always sort of like, oh, yeah you wouldn't understand if you hadn't sort of like listened to this record. It's like, well, you know, and then, and then when people play me tool, I'm listening to it going, yeah, I think I do understand. <laughs> I just don't, just don't especially, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think understanding isn't the issue. It's more like enjoying is the, is the bit that I don't do, you know. Um, but maybe that's because it's been rammed down my throat by people who are telling me I should like it. And, and as I've said before, I'm, I'm pretty contrary. If they tell me I should like something, probably not going to like it until it? Well, it's unavoidable. Why are you telling me a story about, about, tool, about tool from somebody that you were quite close to. Wasn't someone playing a lot of Tool? It was, was it Tool? Yeah, it was Tool, actually. The, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm on about. Yeah. That yeah, would, I've, I've, I've been subjected um, to quite a lot of Tool and, that, and just like, I'm just listening to it going, it's all right, you know. Yeah. It's all right. it's not, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not obituary, is it? I mean, let's face it, it's not yeah. Cannibal Corpse. It's not even Law Mower Death. But it's all right. Yeah. No, Law Mower Death. Law oh, Death, yes, Orville uh, Peck. Do you like that guy? I love Orville Peck. Uh, is that the guy with the mask? Yeah. Does does country music? Yeah, I like him. Yeah. He's so I, I, good. I don't know. Again, not not familiar with it, but I haven't I've heard. Hey, you should I, listen I to that first album. Is that as, I think you'd really illusion. enjoy it. You know? Oh, sorry, man. What, what Twisted saying? Illusion. Sorry, I'm just pointing out the ones of people who've, who've donated here. Oh, yeah. Twisted Illusion says she'd love to do Justin do a vid on on Jellyfish. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, that'd um, be cool. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, Black. Black uh, D D A D I I can't pronounce that. I'd love to see you decode uh, Wow by Alaska Thunderfuck. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Life's a long time. I'll get around to it. Don't worry. Uh, Pat, Foo Fighters, be honest. Yeah. Um, actually, it's not even that. I think it's a bit further down than that. Um, Pat, invent a conspiracy theory. Now, I don't handle the conspiracy theories in this show. I re re rebuke them. I, I, I refute them. Um, but just because but Justin, they're conspiracy uh, theories. And, uh, right, you Pia, who sometimes contributes as well, uh, does a lot of those. And, uh, you know, they're all crazy. Yeah. They're not all What's crazy. your favorite one? What's they're your favorite conspiracy theory, Justin? What's My your favorite, favorite conspiracy one? theory is um, about the third tower that fell after you know a few days after the 9/11, which did happen. That's a, that's not even a conspiracy. That's actually a reality. 
and and how interesting it is about the the one pillar of ninety that was supposed to have led to it being completely unstable. What, how can one hot pillar make it all fall down? I don't know. I hope that doesn't happen to my house. <laughs> how can one hot pillar make it all fall down? I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, present company accepted. There are no hot pillars that would do a thing like that. Um, <laughs> Is that Riffin Motorheart a Voivod yeah. reference? Sounds like something from Nothing Face. Thanks by their deeds. I don't actually know. You'd have to ask Dan about that one. It might be. I'm not sure. A United Ant says, uh, Stevie Wonder Can See is my favourite one. We were talking about that last week or before because there's a, there's a riff on that in Jonathan Creek, which Justin made me watch, where there's a bloke who's a musician and he gets an operation and he can see, but he keeps going. And then he ends up seeing your man's ma when she sunbathed and all this. It's funny. You should try and find out. What's that uh, called? I, I think What's and Stevie, talking about Stevie Wonder can see, there was a great picture I saw during the week of the bloke who went to a Stevie Wonder concert. And he, held, he, he brought a uh, sign with him saying, we love you, Stevie, which he kept holding up during the concert. <laughs> which is, which is uh, that's, that's the definition of madness, really. Yeah. You know? Mm. But it's funny. Okay, Darth steel, Gibson. Steel beams don't melt. Well, they would. Oh, wait, is this Pia? Pia, are you in? Come on. Give oh, me God, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Where is she? Um, I'll just get Sorry. some more of the uh, super chatters. Um, the idea of yes, a signature absolutely. Justin or Dan Gibson Epiphone guitar is something to consider. You are two of the best. Make it happen. Thank you, Darth. Um, write to your local. Um, guitar manufacturer and let's see if we can get that on the road um hi what do you think of sticks minor threat devo b52s dead can dance this mortal coil cocteau twins <laughs> what um you want to take them one at a time sticks uh, just, i don't know minor don't threat know. Uh, cocteau twins i like bits of it yeah mm -hmm. devo minor threat um devo not really no not b52s rock yeah. lobster Dead can yeah, dance. I like that Rome. There's a song called Rome by the B-52. It's very good. I mm. like that. Dead can dance. And she sang on a couple of R.E.M. Oh, did, Dead yeah. can dance. I don't know. This mortal coil. Yeah. Again, don't know. Uh, I think this mortal coil is pretty cool. Cocteau Twins, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. Cocteau Twins, some beautiful records. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thoughts on Kiss Thoughts and Oasis. Thoughts on Kiss and Oasis. <laughs> I like I, I like bits of Oasis. Uh, sorry, who asked that? Uh, G Gian. I like bits of Oasis. Kiss. I went to see Kiss play one night, and uh, it, it was very bad. Um, it got to the end. They did rock and roll all night, and uh, God gave rock and roll to you, which are two great songs at the end, and that was good. But the stuff that they were playing, whatever album they had out at the time, that was really shit, <laughs> really bad. I really like that song that goes. Um, it's like um. Do you, do you love me? Do you love me? And this is the best thing. Do you love me? Really love me? Genius. That is a great chorus. Okay. Just saying. I, I must say that night, um, we bought, um, they had all the Kiss stuff on sale, and one of my mates bought, um, one of my mates has just started going out with, um, his girlfriend, who he's still with, so this is about seven years ago, probably more. And uh, one of the other mates bought a um, a, a Kiss G string and and put it in his wallet when he wasn't looking. <laughs> you won't found it the next day. <laughs> he had to explain it. So that was funny. <laughs> it's got stupid stuff we were up to. Sorry, that was funny. Uh, Thoughts on what about, um, right? Hmm. Swirl, I don't, again I don't know I'm sorry mate I don't know God Give Rock and Roll is a cover yeah I know that's a cover yeah uh, HK but it's a good one you is know, it like, who, who, who sang that originally there was uh, HK can tell us but it's some 70s band because I remember I saw it on um, the Whistle Test when they were rerunning that some uh, one word I can't remember the name of them uh, but the original isn't as good as the Kiss version hmm. I don't think Who's yeah, Daniel, I heard oh, that yeah, Strats, yeah. Struts cover, actually. I was, I was really envious because it was one of those songs that I would love to cover. You know, I think it's brilliant. 
really really love that song. missed my super chat color rose i'm sorry about that nick i remember when gene simmons came that. to lower stuff yeah they, he was doing this thing rock school where they had they had like a posh school and then a rough school and they used our school that me and my brother's school as the rough school um, to, to try and find like um people to be in a band and um oh argent thanks will um argent thanks folks yeah yeah so uh i was really pleased to have come from the from the rough school school of hard knocks and all that but um yeah then he's like then he was like yeah. um but i think he was kind of um they were really manipulating the children and saying look we'll give you 50 quid if you do something really naughty on camera <laughs> like like come on they were really exploiting the what kids you, what you do if you, what you do what if you give me a hundred what, what'll happen <laughs> yeah And that's what uh, that was the yeah, TV show yeah, that yeah. produced little little Chris from Lost Off. Lovely, he was a lovely guy, and uh, unfortunately. R.I.P. Little Chris, uh, Stephen Short here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. R.I.P. Lovely boy. Yeah, I, I, Ivan. Yeah, the Tin Lizzy cover of Rosalie. It is better than Bob Seger's one. Yeah, it is. It is. You're you're correct. I think not that there's nothing wrong with Bob Seger in my opinion, but that is a better person. Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? Like, so uh, did you, did we land on someone asked someone asked Justin Justin did we really land on the moon? Do you believe that? When you say we, <sighs> when you say we, up. who do you mean? Uh, no, did 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 uh, people did human beings actually land on the moon, or was it? Um, I don't know. It, uh, actually, I'm yeah. not sure how I feel about that one, but I do love the 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 con the conceit behind the conspiracy theory. That they used uh, the Kubrick because of his brilliant work on yeah. um, the Space Odyssey to try and simulate it. That's a that's an, a wonderful idea, isn't it? I reckon they did it. I reckon they're on the moon, but I also think they had this other stuff as as backup footage in case this iconic moment wasn't able to be beamed in. I reckon they did both. That's what I that's what I believe. That's 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 good. I saw. Did you ever watch that program, um, Toast of London, which is Matt yeah, Berry's thing? It's very I love funny. Toast of London, yeah. And uh, he, the, where he he revealed the Kubrick conspiracy because he got pissed and he walked onto the set by accident and then he told <laughs> someone down the pub and that's how it got out. <laughs> it's very good. Um, sorry, I want to say uh, by their deeds uh, sent us a few bob and asked a question. What do we think of Supergrass and the Pretenders? Love both of them. Yeah, amazing. Two great uh, I have I have celebrity stories about both of them if you want them, but you know that. Uh, but actually, we're yeah, we're out in the pub. Yeah, let's now, have maybe. stories of both. Them. Both stories. Come on. Let's well, I met Supergrass one night, and they were and they were they were just really nice blokes. We went for a couple of pints because I had to rescue them from a room full of people, and uh, that was great. And then Chrissy Hind was very very rude to a friend of mine one night. Uh, incredibly rude, actually. But maybe she was having a bad day or something. But then, ah, oh, this might be legally dodgy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, then I heard from someone else. I, I was telling someone else this story who was in another big band, and they were saying, "Oh, the exact same thing happened to me." So there you go. Oh, okay. So, but she's known for that. She's known for being a bit uh, testy. But the first couple of Pretenders records are fucking brilliant. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Love those records. Jason keeps asking me if I uh, listen to Chrissy, Royal, Royal Blood. Do you ever listen to Royal Blood? Uh, I've heard them. Yeah, it's just a bass, just a bass player and a drummer, or uh, certainly that's how they start out. It'd be great. It's a yeah, great, it great really band. It'd be brilliant when they're finished. No, I, I like. Um, I, I think. Uh, <laughs> I was. I was a bit just sort of um, skeptical about Royal Blood. Cause I think there's a lot of that sort of reduced nut members of a band making a really good sound. There's a lot of it around, and, and I think it's hard to beat White Stripes and, yeah. and Black Keys. But um, what happened? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, a few week, a few months ago, I was on a boat, and then a band played a cover of that that big Royal Blood song, and I was like, hang on. This actually, they've written a standard there because that was such an effective cover for this band that, you know, had a, was a female fronted band. It's like, they, there's no reason for them to do it, to, for you mm. to think that they would do it um, accurately. And it was really awesome. And I was like, oh, okay. So I obviously like that song, you know. I might have to go back into Royal Blood mm. and have a lis listen around. Any recommendations, welcome. <clears throat> Wow, Merle, Merle asks, uh, offers an opinion here. We could never land on the moon because we could never pass through the Van Allen belt and survive. Ooh, good one. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. What's wrong with Van, uh, Van, Van Morrison's belt? What's the thing? What is it? Yeah, well, it's, it's very wide. It's, it's very hard to close it. 
uh, I believe. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> there's two people asking for opinions there. Uh, uh, opinions on Ween. Ween or a band, I don't know. Uh, opinions on the Grateful Dead. Shocking. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. What, what does the Grateful Dead fan say when they run out of pot? Jesus, this band are shit. <laughs> terrible, in my opinion. There you go. Um, but what is the Van, uh, Van Helsing belt? Come on, someone tell me. What is it? Don't know. I, it, oh, I think I know. That is, that's that's the debris that uh, sort of flies around in orbit, isn't it? Like little bits of like little rocks and stuff. Is that, that it? Yeah, because uh, I think it's like a dusty, a dusty question, Nick, Nick. layer. Back us, back us up there, and, and tell us what the story is. But if it's difficult to get through the Van Morrison's belt, all you got to do is. Uh, oh no! Forget it. I'm not going to do it. You know what we're going to say. It, it, if you're going to say something like it takes an astral week to get round it or something like that, that'd be good. That's actually pretty yeah. good. Actually. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah. Who's that? Old, no, here's a great one from Jason Bonner. Who that old guy in his mom's kitchen? First of all, Jason, <laughs> this is my kitchen. I paid for it. <laughs> uh, your mum is welcome. Though. And uh, the way you spell and, and I have to say Jason as well, I'm sorry to point this out, but the way you spell that is T-H-A-T-A-T. Uh, but thanks for your contribution, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, it, my mom's kitchen. Doesn't look like that, and and we pronounce it mum as well, you know. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on <laughs> Nightwish? I, I, I never heard of them. Don't know who that is. So, just at the title, mm. just if you had to guess what night wish sounds like. Oh, here we go. go. It's a barrier. It's a, it's a barrier of radiation Aha. created by sun hitting magnetic fields of the earth. Okay, yeah. That's right. probably something to do with yeah. the northern lights, and that's probably what you're seeing in the northern lights, right? When you see solar wind. But I mean, they wouldn't go up. I, I should point out that they didn't go into space, you know, just on their own. They were inside a ship at the time. So I presume they took all that into account. Yeah, it'd be a Van Halen belt proof uh, ship, probably, wouldn't it? Then they go up in, right? Van Halen belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite Foy Vance track. I, 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 he's a great blog. Uh, he's got. A, uh, there was, he did an album in Memphis, which was called In Memphis or something. Like that. There's some great songs on there. Uh, he's uh, a real nice guy. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Who's the bloke on the left? Uh, I should introduce the bloke. On the left. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Let's do that. Um, this is a bit of housekeeping. Is, this is, yeah, this is my friend Justin. Uh, he used to be in a band called The Darkness, who, um, you know, had several hits. Uh, and he's still, just a nice guy. I'd like to help him out, like, and get him on here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Um, he basically just lets me talk for a couple of hours, yeah. So. Yeah. Did you enjoy the film Don't Look Up? You know what? Don't look up. It's the same as tool, right? If you don't enjoy it, people tell you it's because you don't understand it. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Mm. Uh, and people, I, I, I said it was not very good, and people said, oh, you, you didn't understand it. I had to point out, look, I'm, I'm not a child. I understood what it was about. That doesn't mean I had to like it, you know? <laughs> You know, well, if you didn't I like understand, it, then you obviously didn't I understand, understand what it, the Eagles mate? are about. That's it doesn't mean I like you know. That's not the reason I don't like them. George is asking the most obvious question. I mean, I don't even think this is this is a, probably a rhetorical question. Van Halen. That is a question. Hold on a second. That's a question I asked you in, your, in the first interview I did with you. I asked you that question. Van Halen or Van Hagar? And, did and you? yeah, I said to you, you were talking about Van Halen. I was asking you what you were playing in at home what music you're playing on, and you, you mentioned some Van Halen albums, and I said, well, like, what, is it Van Halen or Van Hager? And you looked at me like a two heads and said, that's a stupid question. And I yeah. thought, right, he's all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Stella says, Pat's really not my cup of tea tonight. Seems to hate most type of music. I don't, Stella. Just Justin is, uh, is, uh, is deliberately picking out ones that he knows I don't like. I think yeah. that's what happened. But sorry, Stella. If, if yeah, I'm Stella, that's anymore. actually sorry my fault because I, I like pushing him down those roads because it's in enjoyable to watch yeah. him try and not, you know, not even try to be uh, nice about it. It's cool. Well, here's one for you. Big uh, Big Mac Chief says, Nick Drake, five leaves left. I love Nick Drake. There you go. Does that win me back some points? 
I didn't get it at first, Big Mac Chief, when I heard it first. I didn't really get it. Took a while, but I, I love that stuff. And I know Justin does as well. What are we talking about, sorry? Nick Drake. Oh, yeah. I love I love his stuff. And um mm. one of our favorite one, one of our favorite guitar players um did a lot of the lead guitaring on it as well. That like Richard Thompson plays on the right. Nick Drake stuff. Richard, yeah. Which is um uh, does, worth listening out for. Does Pat like the darkness? Yeah, yeah, Pat likes the darkness, yeah. Pat is cool as fuck, says Tanya. Yeah. Thanks Tanya. Right, Tanya. Check is in. Well done. <laughs> um Gary Sharon was the Pat best Van like Halen music apart from Coldplay. What's that? Pat doesn't like any music apart from Coldplay. Amazing. Yeah, you've got it me is there. true, yeah. Once Upon a Time Forever is very is ingeniously wrote, um, Justin, are you going to wear a cat suite again? <laughs> again. Suet. Well, look, um, I wear cat suits every time we do a Darkness concert, actually. Um mm. I don't tend to wear it when I'm doing these things because this is just in my, in my house, you know. Um, but I will uh, next time we do... Tell you what, next time we do one of these um, public faces, I'll, uh, I'll mm. wear it. Yeah. Any, any, uh, any votes for me putting on a cat suit? No? Didn't think so. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, you can count me in. I'm, I'm up for that. You don't count. <laughs> Pat has stolen Jack Black's beard. Or did he steal mine, mm. Lee? That's the, that's the thing. Uh, if you tune into the record machine, you will know Pat's taste in music, and it's great. Thank you, Lita. Thank you very much. What's um, oh, here's a good one from Notorious <laughs> Tom Patton. What's Justin's opinion of Grateful Dead? I paid for his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you paid for my opinion, got Pat's opinion. That's all right, and probably a bit of change as well. <laughs> um... You know, I, the Grateful Dead. I just don't know any of their songs at all. I've never. I don't think I've ever listened to one song. I can honestly say I've just. I've known about the name of it and the and the culture of it, but I've never heard a song. What name a song? What's a good song of theirs to listen to? Uh, fade to what is that grey one? I will get by. I will survive. That's that was the big hit single, wasn't it? And then there's the um, there's the one the the country kind of album. That they did, uh, what was the name of that? Which I have heard. Uh, sorry, Notorious. He did, he did give his opinion. I, I'm just responding to what he asked me. Uh, I can't remember what that was. That, that was all right, you know. But I've seen some of the videos. I've never saw them play, but I saw some of the videos of them playing live. Because I had a friend who was a massive fan. And it just didn't do it for me now, no. Yeah. What was wrong Robert with them? Because it was, songs, was it sort of, yeah. um, was it like a jam band or something like that? Do they just sort of just yeah. play really, that's really what long I, songs? That's what I took away. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Touch of Grey, thanks. Anxiety uh-huh. of the Spectacle, that's the one I was thinking of. Touch Trucking, of yeah, that's the one I was thinking of as well. I, Working Man's Dead, thank you everybody. Current Fantasy said that. That's exactly what I was talking about. Okay. Yeah, it seemed to just go on and on for too long without much going on. Yeah, I feel like it's like... Um, <laughs> more of an american thing as well like um, it's probably not something that was you know steeped in our culture do you think i mean i've never just kind yeah. of, i've never knowingly listened to it i don't know well as someone pointed out earlier on they never really they never really had any big success in this part of the world just didn't really catch on didn't need to i suppose they were just playing so many huge gigs in america sure who cares mm. john martin solid air yeah beautiful Beautiful. New York Dolls, absolutely loved them. Played them on the show yesterday because it was the anniversary of uh, Sylvain Sylvain. It was his one-year anniversary there during the week, uh, the Novello Pew. And I met him one night in a bar in Dublin, and he was a great bloke. He was nice. Favourite Brian in rock? Oh, that's a really difficult one. (laughs) That's a good question. That's a good question. And it's got to be Brian with an I as opposed to a Y. Uh, it could be um, it could be Brian Jones. It could be Brian Adams. It no, could it couldn't. Brian I think Johnson. Brian Adams is a Y. I don't think you allowed him. Could be Brian Ferry. Is that a Y as well? I think that's a Y. All oh, right, that doesn't count, does it? Not? Yeah. But uh, okay. I mean, you know who's the, the Brian best Ferry Brian? Dance. Brian Ferry or Brian Adams? Ferry dance. <laughs> it's 
Such love. Na, na, na. He just does the same dance all the time. This is true, right? Because I've seen him play a few times, and he's great, you know. But um, he's got the he's got the beautiful suit on, you know, and and he's got a couple of uh, he's got beautiful women. He always has beautiful women in the band. Not that that matters, but you know, it's adds to the ambiance, I suppose. And he starts doing "Slave to Love" or "Avalon" or anything. Slave to love, na, 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 na. He just does this dance all the time, and he just looks cool. Mm-hmm. But Slave to love, I know. Avalon. I, I know something about Roxy what happens music. behind the scenes. Then I know why. Why he's got? Is he got some sort of ailment? No, it's better than that. Yeah. If you'd like to know the secret of Brian Ferry's coolness in videos and photographs. <laughs> I will reveal all on the next Patreon podcast. <laughs> I can't wait. Don't tell me now. Where's my wallet? <laughs> the link to which will be the link to my Patreon is in the. Uh, Where's my credit card? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Sorry. Just just to say, we do this every week on on Patreon. Uh, the links in the description. We would probably do a bit more dancing. Then stuff that's less likely it's to get us shut down. Well, Brian Wilson is a good call. Electric Kenzo. Really good call, cool, yeah. I can't escape. I'm a slave to love. I'm Brian Ferry the shit out of it now. Slave to love. Anyway. Uh, why are there no decent bands from Nottingham when we have Rock City, which is one of Justin's favourite venues? Yeah, it is. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't know. Yeah, that's a really... Yeah, that, that's a good one for... Yeah, because you'd think that would have a city like Nottingham with a venue like that really ought to have some sort of culture around it, but it's it's the fa- one of the favourite places to play when you're doing a UK tour. It's completely um, unique in that it's run by a different... It's like it's not... Usually you have a, the same promoter for the whole tour, but it's um, they promote themselves and they always manage to sell it out. We actually... We've, we've sold it out, I don't know five or six times and they've and they've given me a piece of the old dance floor which i have in the house now you can do your next time you come over you can do your brian ferry impression on it if you like yeah brian johnson brian may brian brian eno yeah what is it included for his work on the cold play yeah. Uh, everyone sign up. Yeah, well, that's you're right. Pseudo cowboys there who happen to be friends of ours. Everyone sign up for Justin's <laughs> Patreon. It's incredible. I would agree. Mm. I would agree 100%. Uh, do you have a favorite comedian? And do they impact you as an artist? Well, I'm not an artist, so that must be directed to you. Okay. Um, you think you are an artist. You're a creative individual. You, um, Bullshit you artist. sing. <laughs> yeah, definitely a piss artist. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, John Grant fan. Yes, I love John Grant as well. What, what was the question? Mm. I've forgotten it now. Mm. Favorite? Who's your favorite comedian, and does it influence you as an artist? Uh, um, I think I have, a f- I have a lot of favorite sort of comedic actors. Jim mm-hmm. Carrey, I love. I love uh, Chevy, really? Chevy Chase. Yeah, I do. Yeah, mm. I love. Um, who else? I mean, that's it. <laughs> I can't, don't know. Yeah, everyone likes comedians, don't they? What's wrong with laughing? It's great. Knife fight between Dave Shame Clark Dave Five Clark and Beach George. Boys. Who wins? Dave Clark Five. Oh yeah, are they tough? Just because they're, I think they're just probably tougher. They seem to be tougher, you know. Mm. Dave Clark doesn't take any shit. I think I think if it, you know? in a fist fight you would imagine Brian Wilson to be slightly bewildered by the whole experience and you probably wouldn't get. Could many. you say? Could you say that? Could you say that Dave Clark is bad all over? There you go. There's the Dave Clark fight. Yeah. Anyway, watch. <clears throat> What's what am I? Still going. On? Great stuff, Eric. <laughs> yeah, nice. What are the opinions on Evanescence and the Pretty Reckless? Um, uh, I don't know Pretty Reckless, actually. Have you heard any of their stuff? No. Evanescence is just not that big number one, which I didn't yeah, like. Yeah, that was a huge song, wasn't it? I mean, what's not to like? Yeah. People loved it. The song? 
You didn't like the song. <laughs> I did. Um, I didn't. I didn't like the song. There you go. What? But it's what not to like the song. Oh, it's a pretty well written song though. Great Is that the one? Oh, it doesn't it go into a bit where she starts singing? And goes, oh, I'm dying. Oh, drag me down to hell. Oh, I'm dying. Isn't uh, it's something like that, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's obviously it sounds great when you do it, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't like listened that. to it properly. I'm not bashing like... Janice. I'm not bashing Brian Ferry. I love Brian. We Ferry. love Brian Ferry. Love yes, Jess, we're still Brian here. Ferry. It's a, it is a disaster, but we're still here. We're still here. Wake me up. That's right. Yeah. The, ah, the, that's the, the one. Coffee yeah, yeah. sessions remind. Thanks it's called Wake Me Up, right? Yeah. So wake me up because I've been dragged down to hell by demons under the bed or something like that. It's something like that, isn't it? That sounds like a Spike Milligan poem. I think. Um, I think that's what. Steve Coogan is a genius. Sam Phillips is quite right. Thank you, Sam. You're right. Mm, he's funny, all right. There's no doubt about it. I'm really, I think he's really clever uh, as well. He's talented. So, Pat, big Coldplay fan? Not really, Tony, no. Uh, is The Who Live at Leeds the greatest live album of all time? It's a good one. I don't know if it's the greatest of all time, but it's, it's up there. Best tenure song, go. Uh, Orinoco uh, Flow. Or an ochre flow. Sail away. Sail let me sleep. Away. I'll give you a bit of that then, right? <laughs> let me sleep. Let me sleep with the or an ochre flow. Sail away. Sail away. Sail. I drive past her castle now and again. She's got a castle over the other side of town. Nice. Whereabouts in Ireland is Pat from? I'm from the Midlands. Uh, Daz Patreg. It's a great name. Uh, I'm from a town called Tullamore. You might know from its famous whiskey, but... Uh, that's where I grew up. I've lived here in Dublin for about since about nineteen ninety five. Best Brian Adams song. Jesus, that's a tough one. Uh, Heaven, maybe I like that. What's the best Brian Adams song, Justin? Best Brian Adams song. Cool, that's a difficult one. I don't know if it's heaven. I wouldn't agree with that. I mean, I love, I love it, but I just think anything on, yeah, anything on. So it have to be something on Reckless. Yeah. Run to use pretty. It's hard only love to, is hard great. To beat. Yeah, it's only love is yeah. cool. With the Tina Turner. Um, mm. but what about what's that one you always we always nearly try and sing? Yeah, with a woman. What's that one called again? Yeah. Really, really, Have you ever loved, really a, woman loved a woman or something? Yeah. I love that. You know what? It actually, yeah, we love Brian Adams. Something that's a little like bit a like Eagles. Gray, yeah. that song. Gray. I love Brian. I love Brian Adams. Anytime Reckless, uh, listen. People say, "Oh, yeah, you know," because I was the right age when Reckless came out. But anytime that comes on in the car, I have to pull over, get out of the car. Put, get a tie. Yeah, don't even wear a tie, but get one somewhere. Get one in the, dash, the, in the glove head. compartment, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then get up on the bonnet of the car and start throwing a few shapes. <laughs> well, you, you got you it, you have like no choice. A, you have a tie in your in your glove compartment so that when you get pulled over for speeding, you can put it on and look official say, I'm sorry, officer, I was just on my way. Yeah, it's in a it's, it's in a glass case, which I have to break for emergencies like that. It's either the law or Brian Adams. Yeah. That's all that happens, you know? Yeah. Mm. Uh, the fall as phone box, phone box chicken. Not for me, mate. No. Uh, but I tell you what, one thing I admire about um, what's that guy's name again in the fall? Oh, what's his name? Marky e. Smith. Yeah, Marky e. Smith. They, um, they they made a one of their not not one of their early albums or anything, but after the you know years of doing that thing. They did an album, and um, I think he was signed, they were signed to Rondor Music at the time. And I was hearing this story that they that they had it all approved, and it was like um, it went to mastering, and it was like, no, nah, fuck that, fuck that, give me a microphone. So in the mastering studio, one take sang over one of the songs, <laughs> like got the instrumental mix, and then just and just did a distorted vocal over top of it in the mastering suite, and that was it. That was the one that went to manufacture. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard another story about him as well. Like he was on some BBC program, and they'd got a suit. Go. They got a suit for him, and then um, they they were like, um, "Oh, at the end of the recording, the program, or whatever." Like, okay, thanks, Mr. Smith. Can we have that suit back now? And he said, "Try and take this suit. Try and take this suit away from me, and I will do a shit in it." <laughs> 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 I love that guy. He's fucking awesome. <laughs> Um, well, I've got I've, I've got mates who uh, who think 
he was the second coming, you know, and we'll we'll bore you all night about mm. fall stuff. And but I reckon if I want to hear uh, some drunks howling at the moon, I can just go to the pub that's down in the corner at midnight and listen to it. That, you know. Yeah. See, now I'm going to get in trouble for saying I don't like music again. What was? The- <laughs> uh, is there anyone famous lurking in the chat? I don't think so. It's just enough famous enough, you know. Um, uh, I'm not famous enough. Famous people do tend to... Favourite Nirvana. There you go, Justin. Um, heart-shaped box. Is that, in it? Is that an acceptable... That's actually a true answer. So, heart-shaped box. Mm. Yeah. No, Did was it In Utero? Sorry, heart-shaped box is my favourite song. In Utero. Actually, heart-shaped mm. box, the best of Nirvana. And it comes in a heart-shaped box. Why haven't they done that? Excellent. You know. Don't know. Yes, that is a that's a good suggestion. Cacophony sessions. I think we've done that, but that's a that's a good suggestion. What is the suggestion? Justin Hawkins says the new Doctor Who. Now this is a good question. This is the kind of question we've been waiting for from Benjamin Davis. Justin Hawkins is the new Doctor Who. Now, first of all, if you became the new Doctor Who, all right, mm. what would be? I have a couple of questions about this. Thank what would you be your role? Uh, first of all. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I didn't say that. I said, uh, first of all, I'll, I'll come to that. Um, what would be your outfit, first of all? You know the way I have to pick an iconic yeah. iconic outfit? Yeah, well, I think I'd obviously go for, like, the bean cap of infinite knowledge. Um, something at the neck. This is more like... A city yeah. slickers t-shirt with a waistcoat. I think I'm basically... This is my mm. audition today. What do you think? Mm. Right, it's nice to have the that's scarf, good, yeah. but that's the Tom Baker one, isn't it? And if I was the companion in this, would, would I have to wear a short skirt and everything like the companions, or could I get away without that? Um, how, how does it... What does it mean? Um, does the companion change through time as well, or is it just a different companion in every... Uh, they do, I think, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I'll be honest with you, it's a, it's a while since I've seen any Doctor Who, but... Uh, mm. um, yeah. I, um, I think, I think I would, yeah, there's I always need, a companion, isn't there? I would need Canine back as well, the, the robot dog. Otherwise, oh, otherwise, I'm not doing it. That's a clincher. You know? <laughs> We're out. <laughs> I, need, I want Pat Carty riding um, K9. Otherwise, I just, I'm not interested. Yeah. I, I could be the voice of K9. Well, K9, we're in a terrible fix here. What do you think? Woof, woof. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Has K9 got an Irish accent? Yes. So what of yeah. it? Woof woof. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some there's some children stuck down a well. Lead me to them. <coughs> woof, woof. This way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's uh, sorry? There's a good one. What's that? What's that mean? Uh, this live stream says Big Polly P is the best visual interpretation yet that I've seen of 2019 on the left. And 2020 on the right. Which one am I on? Am I on the left or the right? Oh, I get you now. Yeah, I see. Justin is all <clears throat> well put together and looked after. And then I'm what happens if uh, you're locked down for 12 months. Is that a... Uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's fair enough, Polly. I think, that, I think yeah. big Polly, that's accurate. Nice one, Polly. Uh, was I disappointed when the Point Depot changed his name? Uh, no, I wasn't. Because I, I think when they did it up, Dar Dar, that they improved the sound about a thousand percent i think it's a much better venue now than it was there you go i saw justin playing the old point depot he had the boob chariot and everything so that was the arena that was size a, thing how many people could yeah, get, a, get in there is it ten thousand or something 16 16 thousand yeah, or something no, like that i think cool yeah what um it was good blade runner or alien let's go Alien. Yeah, Alien, I think. Mm. Uh, it's just it's more fun. Yeah, I think. It is. Oh, Blade Runner was all right. Yeah. I like Blade um, right. it. Justin will tell you. Rutger I am Hauer, not a, though. A movie buff at all. Is it, was it yeah. Rutger Hauer in Blade Runner? Yeah. Amazing but performance. Amazing it, was John performance. Hurt in, it was John Hurt in Alien. Is and that Aliens or Alien? Which one is it? Aliens or Aliens? That alien? was Alien. Okay. Alien. And then Aliens. 
that kicked arse as a kind of a commando in space movie. I thought that was pretty good. All right, yeah. Mm. I mean, obviously, Matt. Yeah, Lake Seven is the choice, really. Yeah, of course, you know. Mm. Uh, yes, obviously. There was another. Um... Uh... <laughs> God. <laughs> this good. <laughs> Predator, yeah, that's the correct answer. Is it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to read it out. That's brilliant. Right. I, I, I saw the one. You, I saw the one you're laughing at. What's I'm going to read it out. It says here, uh, uh, Mr. Sh- Mr. Shaw boys says Justin looks good, but Colin Farrell has let himself go. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's really good. Oh, that's dear. good. Classic. <laughs> That's good. I mean, obviously, fuck you, you know, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the fuck you goes without saying, but... Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's a given, you know. They Live. Now, that is a great that's movie. That's got that line in it when he goes, it's Roddy... What's his name again? Roddy something or other. Um, Rod, Rowdy Roddy, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Trotter. Roddy Roddy Rodney Trotter goes in and um, he says, um, I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubble gum, and then starts shooting the aliens. Nice. And if you thought that was nice. wooden and hammy, the way I just did it there, you really ought to see the original because it's exactly the same. That was an accurate one-for-one one yeah. retelling of it. Whew. I should say that the, the Colour Rose has, has, has offered a few quid to ask you a question. Go on. Uh, Favourite bass player? Oh, yes. That's a tough one. But it's, in a way, it's easy. Rick James. That's a good answer. I was going to say uh, Bernard Edwards. Who? Bernard Edwards, Sheik. Uh, oh, that guy, yeah. Or, um, He's cool. Or, what's his name? Bootsy Collins is brilliant. Because uh, I love the, the James Brown records he was on. Uh, mm. Let me see, who else? I don't know, there's a lot. Yeah, Norman Watt Roy is a great choice. Paul Manning, he is fantastic. I saw him play. Uh, I don't know if he's still with us, but I saw him with um, with uh, Wilco Johnson one night. That was good. That was a good night out. Uh, James Jeffcoat just threw in a few pound in the hat. Didn't even ask a question. Amazing. Thanks, James. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Paul McCartney, yeah, of course, does oh, that. Oh, that's a yeah. really good yeah. call. Paul McCartney. Um, Mark King, you've got to be honest. He's he is amazing. Well, he's able to play, but the records are terrible. No, they're not. I love Level 42 records. <laughs> they're fucking amazing. I'm not proud. Lessons I in love. Wrong. When will you ever learn? Yeah, it's Lessons awesome. Lessons in love. Bum, 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 you, you turned it into indie rock. That's Level it. 42 is really James great. James Jameson is a great call, really. Mark King yeah, is one, of my, great one of my heroes. Uh, He's amazing. Who, who, who said that twice? Uh, Phil Linnett, of course, yeah, of course. Uh, sorry, I missed one there. I wanted to point out there. Uh, yes, good work, oh, Aaron. Of course, my bass playing on Conquerors was exemplary. You're quite right. That's true. Mm. <laughs> the bassist from Rancid, forget his name. <laughs> yeah, Probably not that guy. Geddy Lee's up there. Fun is the Alex fun. James good? He's good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, I think so. He is good. Yeah, he yeah. chooses some interesting notes. Uh, there's a couple of questions there for you that, that people have, have paid to ask. What's your opinion on metal music? What's your favourite metal band? There you go. That's a good one for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. This metal is, is such a broad term now, isn't it? Because, like a lot of what I used to think was just is, yeah. just rock sleazy rock is, is now you know hair metal I don't understand how hair metal mm. can if, if hair metal falls in it then it's probably going to be one of the hair metal bands that I would list as my favourite well, who's, who's the best who's the greatest hair metal band what Motley Crue probably Poison is this Do hair metal or, or is this glam knows, rock no? if it's Van Halen it's an obvious Van Halen isn't it but I don't think uh, Van Halen's yeah. just got to be America's greatest rock band. 
Yeah, they are great. Yeah, but you said you, you is, gave a different answer for that theater. Too. Aerosmith is great. America's said, uh, greatest rock and roll band. Yeah, Aerosmith. Van Halen is yeah. America's greatest rock band. So who's where the, Tom who's Petty America's... and the Heartbreakers? Then? Oh, that's a. I see that as a solo artist with a backing band. Isn't that different? Well, yeah, you could say the same thing, but I love Bruce Springsteen. I don't think you're as big a fan as I am, but mm, I do uh, love Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. But I'd, 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 I'd say I was more into Tom Petty. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom Petty. Uh, made I just me like really to say sad to, when he uh, died. I was very sad. Titch McGraw just just gave in two pounds just to tell us that Andy Rourke of the Smiths is great. I agree with you, Titch. Absolutely. Mm, that's true. Absolutely, great I love those day. Smiths records. Mm. Uh, White Snake, Guns and Roses. White Snake. We need more um, uh, ridiculous questions, you know, to, to throw us in, in that direction rather than... Uh, uh, do you, uh, Ian Bradshaw uh, says, do you work at Burger King because you're giving me a Whopper? There you go. Uh, That's good. Okay. That's a Thanks. really good chat line. Uh, right? Todd Franklin asks, when are you doing a Todd night? Okay. Oh, Todd uh, Rundgren night. That's what oh, we did. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I think we'll have to yeah. get the synthesizers right. out for the Todd night. Yeah, some great, some great songs. Mm -hmm. You're right. Some great songs. Hello, uh, it's me. Somebody said on, on my... Um, my um, Janice, you're right. John McVie, of course. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Good, cool. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's a question now. Mike's Mike's mouse asks, "Is there? There's no place in rock for bald people." Discuss. Well, see, I'm a bit prejudiced there, Mike. Obviously, mm. because uh, you know the tide is going out very quickly on the top of my head, and um, so is there a place in rock for baldies? Well, Brian Eno? surely, surely uh, um, the edge, surely the edge, the edge. What's going uh, on? What's your man and Judas Priest? Uh, yeah, and um, you've got there's like a um, you know? there's a lot of people who who are you know conceal it with hats and wigs and so on it's always i love it when the wig when you do something like extraordinary like you you leap from a hydraulic platform and then the wigs round like that and then you have to adjust it as you as you're coming back <laughs> <laughs> of course there's a place for bald people it's just it's just different that's all midnight oil billy corgan yeah they're mm. all yeah, yeah 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 that's true dave gilmore yeah he's a bit sting is a bit short of of hair oh well, he doesn't rock though really but Tony okay. Levin, that's a good answer. Sinead O'Connor? Uh, that is a good answer. Sinead O'Connor, there you go. I was, at a, I was at a funeral, I told this story before, I was at a funeral and my dad's cousin was a priest and uh, so he used to say the mass for family funerals and things like that. So at this one, it was a very solemn occasion, obviously. But he, since he lost his hair when he was very young and he always wore a wig and it was always <laughs> a terrible wig and so he walked out. He walked out on the on the altar to say the mass, and my my dad leaned over to me. Everyone was trying to be quiet and you know solemn and everything. Nudged me in the, in this in the side. I said, "What? What? What?" And he says, "Imagine." He says, "He went into a shop, right?" And some fella in the shop said, "He asked the fella in the shop. He says, does this look good?'" And the fella in the shop was such a bastard. He says, "Yeah, that really suits you." <laughs> <laughs> It was one of it was one of those. The wigs was a different color from the side of his hair, you know. Yeah. So it just looked like a cat had landed on the top of his head. <laughs> you know? I love that. That's not sorry, and that's not to take the piss out of bald people because you know, we have feelings too. Mm. Yeah. There's no. I don't think there's much hate for you two and the edge, Richard. Not on this show. We like you two. You know, I don't think maybe their last couple of records are great, but you know, they make great records. Brett Michaels. Brett Michaels. With the ever-expanding mm -hmm. um, hairband. That's a really good system, that is. Where yeah. You start Mark off Nuffer with, like a, you start off with well, like a bandana there, and then as the years progress, yeah. you un gradually unfold it until it's just covering the whole head, and then eventually, the big reveal. Beautiful. Yeah. St Stevie Van Zandt always covers, you know, covers the head, always. Mm. Peter Gabriel, yeah, yeah. Rob Halford, that's who I meant, yeah. He's a good baldy. <laughs> he's a good baldy. What does that mean? <laughs> There's good baldies and bad baldies. He's one of those good, it suits some he's people one of those good baldies. <laughs> he's a good baldy. I'll tell you who's yeah. a really good baldy in the acting world. That uh, is it Mark Strong? The, the When you see him oh. and he grows his hair around the side, oh, bald on the top. He looks amazing. That guy's just like, should be an inspiration to he's all of us. He's a fantastic actor. Mm. Yeah. 
fantastic actor. Yeah, we uh, um, just Charlie, just to get on in excess, we we love it in excess, and often we'll sing their songs in absolutely. the in the pack cast on Sundays. Yeah, we'll do acoustic we do, yeah. renditions of those because we just love them. We haven't we haven't done much singing tonight because uh, we don't want to get the thing thrown off, you know. So if I was to launch into an eagle song or something, I think they'd just shut us down straight away. Yeah. Um, you that's you not shouldn't even happen, really yeah, say but, the uh, words eagle song because then they're ready like that. And then they yeah, that's goes. right. Yeah. Pete Townsend, yeah, I'm a big fan of Pete Townsend, the mm. Colour Rose, yeah. Mm. Uh, what's the, there, there's a good one now. What's the most <laughs> iconic guitar in music? That's the 3121. What's the most iconic guitar? Is it a Les Paul? Is it? It's either going to be the Les Paul or the Stratocaster. Or the, you know, what about um, the Rickenbacker, which is the... Telecaster would be my vote. Telecaster would be my vote. Because of the, because of the spring, string beam. See, I'd always go Rickenbacker over Telecaster because I'm more Tom Petty and you're more string beam, Bruce string beam. No, but it's not even Bruce. It'd be, it'd be um, Steve Keith. Cropper, Keith Richards. Uh, Here's who a else has mastered a Telecaster? This is a Keith Richards guitar. The um, nineteen sixty nine right. Dan Armstrong, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Am Ampeg guitar, which Ooh. is uh, that was a Keith Keith Richards one. Yeah, Phil Collins. Yeah, well, he's certainly bald. I don't know if he's made a great contribution or anything like that. Of course, he's made a great contribution. Yeah. How dare was as a drummer, as a singer? You were giving out about Genesis earlier on. What are you giving it to me for? Yeah, but Genesis. Out about Genesis uh, no, I was. I was actually earlier about Genesis. I said if you compare Genesis to Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and you have to choose one, I would always choose Genesis because. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Mm. Cause I the can two dance. Because even their latest stuff is really good. I think. I can't dance. Is really good. Pat, look closely. <laughs> no. Yeah, I Can't Dance is brilliant. I love all that stuff. Well, that's a great album as well. So. Yeah, all right. mm. Status Quo, that's a good call there as well. <laughs> Mr. Shaw Boys. Uh, Ted Danson was bald during Cheers, was he? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Strat, yeah. No, they're all great, yeah. I mean, it's what you do with it, really, more than anything else, isn't it? No. Uh, oh, the, the, there's a good one for you. Justin, do you hate or love the doors as Adam? Do I hate or love them? Why can I not be ambivalent mm. and unaffected by them? Why can I be nonplussed? Can I be anything? What can I? I um, the doors, I love some of it. And I think I loved a lot of it when I was um, about 14 or 15. I got really. Yeah, you know, I think that's the too, kind of thing yeah. that gets you when you're like not adolescent, but certainly pubescent, and um, mm. and I think there's something about that sort of poetry that that connects at a certain age, yeah. really, and hormonal profile. I agree, but it goes away well, after a while. Basically. But you know, hey, yeah. yeah, it goes away, and then but then you, you know, I still I still really appreciate the the classics, but. Um, I don't know if I'd ever mm. listen to it with the same fervour as I used to, really. Mm. But that's not mm. to say they're not great. I, still have to, I do think they're great, but they just connected me with, at a certain time in my life and not again afterwards, really. <laughs> Pocket says, I'm having a bad day. Thank you for not playing the Eagles. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's good. Uh, there's a, there's two, uh, two paid for questions there. First of all, uh, from By Their Deeds, who is the worst person that you still loved our music? That's a good question. Um, take that first, and then we have another one as well. Uh, okay. <clears throat> that's a that's a good question. Well, you do hear stories, don't you? About about. I, I, actually, I know. I, you know, well, I know. That I have my answer straight away. Actually, are you going to are you going to say? Okay. Well, I'd love to hear your answer. Well, I think it's probably uh, judging by his his behaviour in the last couple of years, and also from what I know from people who've spoken to him. Uh, Van Morrison doesn't strike me as a very nice guy. I was going to say him too. But I really, I was going to say. Yeah, him. I really love. Mm. There's, 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 there's five or six Van Morrison albums I think are absolutely genius. Mm. You know, I mean, to find out that Eric Clapton is an arse doesn't really affect me much because I don't like him anyway. Uh, and I, I went to see him play live once. It was one of the worst concerts I ever went to. Easily, it was just 
boring. It was really, really boring. Uh, and I know people love him, but God, I don't get it. But who would you say? Would you say Van as well? Well, or? I was going to say the same thing because I, I, I've um, I've had conversations with people who have worked for him, um, you know, and, and like one of my old tour managers was his tour manager, and some of the things you hear about him. I mean, it's only anecdotes, anecdotal. It's all allegedly this, and but it's some just terrible stories. Mm. But it's kind of like... Yes, um, allegedly. Yeah, terrible stories, but then it's like, his music's amazing. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's so disappointing, yeah. but in a way, I try not to listen to the stories now, so that's probably the best. It's funny that yeah. we agreed on that, because well, I wasn't I mean, sure what you, you know, where you were going to go with that. We're not, we're not going to... It's not like I'm going to be hanging out with him, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know? exactly. Who cares? It's, it's the music. Know? It's the music that all that's all that counts. Um, kids asks first girlfriends and subsequent heartbreaks. That's a good question too. Um, first girlfriends. What makes you assume that we're straight? That's good. That's a good point as well. That's a good point as well. Should we just limit that to companions? First companions. Yeah, that's a good. Can't that's a good name names that's though, good. can we? What do we do here? Uh, well, you can give a first name, I suppose. If All you right, wanted. okay. Father O, what was his name again? <laughs> <laughs> Does that count? I'm not sure. Uh, is, well, is that where he went after he was in my parish? No, oh, I wonder where they put him. All right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was all all that heartbreak and all that. That's all part of uh, getting where you're going, you know. So that's all. It's all important. It's important to have your heart broken. I think because then you know. Then later on, do you know what I mean? You need to have that. You can't appreciate. You need to have bad times because you can't appreciate good times. If everything is just a flat line, it's nothing. But if it goes up and down, you can appreciate when it's up. You know, you have to have that. I think, how about that? Yeah, that's mm. good. That's good. I also mm. think you can't write a love song unless you've actually loved and lost in the way that Frank has, you know. And those mm. greats, you know, you get put through the ringer and it, it comes out in your songwriting. Here's, I've got a slightly, um, I would say, a, a controversial take on, on songwriting. I believe that, mm. you know, if you are a creative person and you're obliged to, to, to make lyrics that people hang their hearts on. I don't think, mm. I don't think you're, oh God, I don't know if I should say this in, in a responsible way. I think being broken in that way and, and in need of an outlet, that's when you use songwriting. You know what I mean? Mm. Instead of therapy. Mm. And it's a really irresponsible thing to say, but I think that's how it used to be. I think like the great no. songs that really make you yeah. cry are written by people who have loved and lost. They really need help. They need to express something. And they need people to listen to them. And they use their audience and they mm. use their med the medium of their art to do it. And it saves their lives and probably saves hundreds of thousands of other lives as well. You know what I mean? Mm. Think about the music. No, think right. about I the think music that saves people's lives. People always say that, like, "Oh my God, your music saved my life." Not, not to me, but you might hear somebody say it to Bono. I've heard somebody say it to Bono. Mm. I was standing there when when, I, when it happened, but it's like, mm. I really think that without that experience, I mean, so are we going to lose that when people when people are so focused on on mental health that they don't put it into songs? <laughs> what happens then? You know, is there enough left? That's the same. That's yeah. I mean, that's the same with all. The great art, I think, that it has to come from. I'm not saying that a, a, a brilliant song can't be written, or a brilliant painting can't be done, or a brilliant book can't be written by someone who's 15. I'm not saying that at all. Mm. But I think it's more likely to be great after there's been a bit of living. I want to just address something else as well. Sorry, that a few people said there. You know, they think Eric Clapton is right to have his opinions. Eric Clapton is entitled to his opinion, and you are entitled to your opinion about Eric Clapton. That's not what I was saying. I was just giving you my opinion about it. Um. Of course he's entitled, he's, he's, he lives in a free society, he's entitled to his opinion, as are you, as am I. That's all I'm saying. And I'd be more talking about um, the Rivers of Blood speech and all, you know, the Enoch Powell stuff in the 70s, that's not great either. For a man who, his whole career is based on black people's music, 
you know that's not great anyway but that's just my opinion mm. and there's that's more not. opinions like these ones on our patreon <laughs> <laughs> the link's in the description. If you like these opinions or you hate these opinions or you, you want to in, 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 you know, join in with the debate, the mass debate, <laughs> then you can always uh, yeah. follow the link in the description and come to our Patreon. This is, is really, really... It starts off as fun, then we get heavy around about three hours in. It, just, it always works like this, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> yeah. And but, when we start, but, you we know, start to fall, fall asleep and things like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Stuff like that. Um, has anyone got any questions before we... It's getting three hours now. I suppose before we maybe think about wrapping it up, mm. has anyone got any questions they want addressed? Uh, Ed, and, Adam and thanks very much, everybody who joined us. Yeah, Thank this you has very been really much. cool. We really Adam's and asking a great who, one, though. Just, Pat, check just, this one out. Can you separate the art from the artist, Woody Allen, Michael Jackson, etc.? It's a similar question to the earlier one, but I think... Um, That's a great question. That's a great question. I think I you, think have, you to, have to, don't you? You, know, you have I mean, to. Uh, hmm. I think you have to. If if you think about um, something like, uh, let me see, uh, in music, maybe, you know, that's a that's a good. I mean, th does the fact Michael Jackson did whatever he did bil uh, take away from Billie Jean? Not really, you know, because it's such a great record. Um, if you found out that. Um, you know, Ernest Hemingway wasn't great with the women in his life. Um, it doesn't take away from how good his first couple of books were. You know, it, it, Picasso wasn't was the same. Doesn't take away. You know, it, it, you have to, I think, because the people who make the art <coughs> are people, and everybody has something wrong with them. You know. Yeah, but that's kind so, of where you the, know, art the extreme. Comes. I see people mention. Where I see people mention from, Gary yeah. Glitter. It's a bit of an extreme example, but. Um, yeah, I mean, some of those Gary Gritter records are really good. But, yeah, I mean, obviously a horrible human being, you know. Kevin Spacey, yeah, I mean, yeah, Kevin Spacey was a great actor. Obviously, you know, he did some bad things. That's Nobody's condoning that. You have to kind of separate them, I think. You have to. Yeah, Pine Rock says Michael Jackson's innocent. I don't know, Pine Rocks. I don't know. I'm only just going on what I read in the news. Is Pat the new James Bond, says Benjamin Davis. Yes, Very possibly. that's correct. Very possibly. I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to reveal that, but that's... Uh, it's out now. That's true. Speaking <coughs> of out, this, look at this. Elk Chocolate says, Justin, there has been a lot of chat on the Darkness Army Facebook page that you are an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> I have no opinion on it either way, but can you confirm your stance on it? I will confirm all on next week's podcast, which is available on my Patreon. Go to the, uh, the links in the description, wherein all will be revealed. <coughs> Keep coming back. Isn't he very, he's very professional the way he does that, you know? Yeah, but, uh, uh, I'll, only, I'll see, only do that with. He would let that. me. I would talk all night, but he would. He, you see, he's clever. <laughs> he says, "Right, listen, shut up, Pat. You know, save that for next week." Yeah, you know, well, it's time to. Get people I mean, we've done three hours now. We should probably call it a night. But um, I think you should. Uh, what tell uh, t talk a small bit about um, what's on? Uh, talk about the Patreon. Talk about what's on offer there, because it's not just me talking shit. There is other stuff. No, there's you talking you shit, uh, me talking shit, and then sometimes uh, us singing songs together. That's just one of the tiers, though. Mm -hmm. There's there's a there's an opportunity to just support the thing, um, with a few sort of just for a, a nominal fee, which uh, keeps you in the community. There's a Discord thing where all everybody chats to each other, and it's an amazing group of people. It really is a good laugh. Um, I do mm. things like um, personal chats lovely, lovely where we have Zoom. Yeah, lovely people. Um, I have Zoom chats with with you guys, and sometimes one on one stuff with uh, lessons in it's guitar lessons, and it can be vocal lessons or whatever you want it to be. Really. Lessons in lessons in love. Lessons, lessons in, in love. love as dum, well. Da, da, dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. When not, will not you ever learn? See, you know that song back to front. You, you definitely love that song. I do. Yeah. Um, I do. And the mm. fact that he's a bass player and a household name that tells you something, doesn't it? Dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. How many bass players have how household names? Do you think? Sting? Yeah, it's still shit though. <laughs> There's this For stuff. Sure. Um, no, not on Twitch. No. Um, it's Discord and Patreon, really. Um, Sarah, don't, yeah. I'm, I know that you'd love to hear us sing Joe Jolene. Um, Pat does a, a gorgeous Jolene and... Um, We'll get we'll get that for you next week, Sarah. You just have to sign up to the. Yeah, Patreon. we can't really. We're, we're not really allowed to sing tonight. You know, that's the thing. And it's not. You know, I did. I, I you'd notice that the only song that I, any of us played tonight, was a song written by one of us. 
because that was deliberate, you know, because mm. he can't really sue me, you know. Well, he could, but I, I mean, what would be the point? I fully intend um, to at some point, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, he's bound to, yeah. Obviously, when we break up, yeah, there'll be court cases, of course there will, yeah. I'll just go uh, get obviously. The other things, <laughs> um, yeah, um, there, we don't um, occasionally do audio chat on Discord, but it gets a bit crazy in there. Um, in the sense that bit, you can't yeah. really hear what anyone's saying and there's too many platoonie voices. But we, uh, we're we in there sometimes. I'm probably going to go in there now. Are you coming in? Yeah, why not? We'll go in, maybe. But uh, The J-Plan thing is something that Justin does as well, where is, is kind of workout stuff. I don't get involved in that, obviously. Um, the... Uh, uh, let me see. There was stuff. For, yeah, there are team it, nights. Yeah, it, like we do um, a bond night stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, music tier. No, what will happen as well? Tier with all with lesson yeah, uh, tutorials is, and stuff. Sorry, go on. Yeah, that's right. Now, what happens is when, when we play songs is that you have to remember. And I'm warning people who are thinking about on the fence about putting money into this. I'm terrible at, it, and that's half the fun. Is that I'll start singing something in the wrong or in a key, and I'll discover by halfway through the song that I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> and it's practically away for me. <laughs> or uh, someone will, will uh, on the thing we use for chords, a chord will come up that I've never seen before in my life. That's always that that stuff causes problems, but it makes its own fun. That's where the crack is, yeah. you know. So exactly, yeah. Join us for some fun. Links in the description. Love you guys. Thanks a lot for joining us, and <coughs> thanks for yeah, to and all thanks, our regulars who have uh, allowed us to yeah, do this. And um, for all your questions, are great. Yeah, great questions in there. Um, appreciate you all. So um, see you on the ice, and adieu. Oh, shall I do this? <laughs> shall I? You want to sing it with me? Yeah, you do. Team tune. Yeah. Just in Hawkins, right again. <laughs> <That's> gorgeous. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>